Well, there are some games that you know their importance and you know what you got to do to win. If you're Oak Ridge, you've got to stop one guy, number eight. If you're both of these teams, you've got to win the game to be at home in the playoffs. Everything is in front of you tonight as Carnes travels over to Oak Ridge to take on the Wildcats on rivalry Thursday. Mark Packer along with Austin Price. We, this is one of those games we did a year ago. It was so much fun. We're like, sign us up for that again. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, West and Alcoa. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we get the sequel tonight. Uh, we'll see if Oak Ridge is able to avenge like West did a year Against ago Alcoa, or yeah. a few, just a few weeks ago. And uh, we look at tonight's key players, Deshaun Bishop, is going to be the guy. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There's nobody else to pick. I mean, there's good players on Carnes' team, but nobody does what he does. 1,738 yards on the year, 20 touchdowns. Again, they're not giving him the ball near as much as they did a year ago, and that's by design. But now we've got to the playoff push. I expect that to change. Then you got Jai Hunley. You know, he, he, he's not getting the ball that much. Only 52 carries, 397 yards, three touchdowns. I think they got to get to him more. I think Oak Ridge has got to establish the run to take pressure off of the young quarterback. The problem is they're missing their two offensive tackles tonight, Mark. The, the ability to run and protect becomes way more difficult. Hunley is a guy that I'm excited about being in the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase because he wants an opportunity. He's going to be given that opportunity in the rivalry showcase. And as we speak, the Wildcats are at the top of the stairs. New head coach Scott Cummings said there's a number of things that you have to do when you take over a program to kind of put your own system in. But you also have to embrace the history and traditions of Oak Ridge, and this is one of them. Yeah, you're right. And uh, trying to time it up well where they can come down the steps, run through the banner, and kick it off right here as, uh, you know, you, you, they, they start the railroad crossing. Carnes comes running through, led by their fearless leader, number eight, Deshaun Bishop. Oak Ridge led by their fearless leader, Scott Cummings. <laughs> 72 steps to glory down to this A lot this easier field. to go down than come up. It is. And the first quarter is brought to you, as always, by OEB Law. Turn your wreck into a check with OEB Law. Brad Turner, can you believe seven years at Carnes? I, I thought the, the most poignant thing that he said when we talked before the game was that four years ago, they had nine ninth graders, nine freshmen in the entire program. Now they have 31. In other words, even when Bishop leaves, they've still got an opportunity. And let's head down to the field area. Kane standing by with Scott Cummins. Coach, obviously a big time game coming up tonight. Implications for later on. What's the mood and the vibe been for practice this week for your club? It's been good. You know, we laid a big egg last week and kids are ready, I think, to, to get that taste out of their mouth. Obviously the challenge is stopping a lot of guys, but one guy in particular, Deshaun Bishop, what type of challenges does he present for your defense? I mean, you gotta, I mean, there's no secret to it, right? You gotta rally to the ball. You gotta be, you gotta shoot your arms and tackle like, you know, like you're taught to do every day in practice. And, uh, you know, you gotta get a bunch of guys to the football. You know, if you try to have too many situations where one guy is trying to, you know, make that tackle, you're gonna be in trouble against a guy like him. So uh, schematically, I think we're okay, you know. Uh, kids just got to execute the defensive game plan and get to the ball. Coach, thanks so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Mark? Weather well, yeah. tonight, the uh, fall leaves have turned, at least part of them, 62 degrees, humidity at 39%, although it doesn't feel like that. It feels beautiful, uh, cool, crisp, and uh, just a real pleasant evening out here at Blankenship Field. You look at the standings, Mark. Three and four overall is Oak Ridge, but they're two and one in region play. And with a win tonight, we'll take a huge step to being the home team in the playoffs. Now, they would still have to, you know, cross some hurdles. But at the same time, that Campbell County game coming up week 11 would be the head-to-head -head type thing that you would be looking at. Campbell County's also, in, right? They're in, yes, that's correct. Um, the, the, the four playoff teams are kind of set. Powell, Carnes, Campbell County, and Oak Ridge. Um, you know, you look at, you know, there's some jockeying there. Carnes with a win tonight really solidifies their spot as the two. If Oak Ridge wins and then Clinton were to beat Carnes and then Oak Ridge loses to Campbell County week 11, Campbell County could rise all the way to the two 
If not, they're the three or four. So the winner of this is not guaranteed a home playoff game. Is this what you're telling me? After well, I've said this 78 times already. I, no, there's a scenario where they couldn't if Oak Ridge was. If Carnes wins, yes, they're guaranteed the home playoff game. Okay. Because they'll have head-to-heads over Oak Ridge and the Campbell County. Nothing like the family conversations that you have with your brothers over in Campbell County. This is returnable from the one, and here is Bishop. Bishop will try to bounce to the outside and look out here. Bishop past the 20, using the speed past the 30, out past the 40. They'll set up shop at the 44-yard line after a play that really should have been bottled up back at the 20. Bishop gives him great field position, 43 yards on the return. That, that's, and, and what that is, is that's the added muscle and weight that Deshaun Bishop put on. He shrugged off a couple of Oak Ridge players to break tackles and went and did his thing, got him up near midfield. Yeah, the quarterback, Caden Tarwater, is known well in these parts. Uh, he was Oak Ridge's quarterback a year ago, and now he is over at Karn, so steps back onto the field at Blankenship, looks at all of his friends and says, okay, uh, let's play. Tarwater will play fake, and this one knocked down right across the middle. The Rivalry Thursday starting lineups brought to you by Old Ben Franklin Motors. Well, one thing you can count on with Carnes is size on the offensive front. Chris Hunter, for instance, number 52, a senior 6'5", 290. So it's not just about Bishop. Bishop's got some guys in front of him, giving him a little bit of space. Yeah, and they're all senior laid, you know, four seniors on that offensive line. Good news and bad news for Brad Taylor. Good for now, bad for next year. Off left tackle, Bishop a gain of five. And this defense will be tested, especially at linebacker. I was talking with Matt Lowe, the head coach at Powell earlier today, who has played both of these teams. And he said, keep your eye on number 33, Brian Kelly. If Brian Kelly has a big game and can bottle up Bishop, that's the key for Oak Ridge is that guy right there. Yeah, he, he's been a really good player the last couple of years for the Wildcats, uh, dating back to his sophomore year. And uh, you know, you're right. I mean, if he, he plays well, you know, the, the, he's making a lot of tackles. I guess it depends on where he's making the tackles, right? They'll bring right pressure there. up the middle, and knowing. And 33 makes the tackle. Yeah, knowing that they're going to Bishop on that play, Overridge pins their ears back, call that a loss of six, and a three and out for the Beavers. That was just a jailbreak on that right side. Love that phrase. Four, four, four great jerseys. Bottle up Bishop in the backfield, and they'll erase the five-yard gain from just a moment ago, and they'll punt the original line of scrimmage, that being the 44. Deep for the Wildcats, Almani Rembert for the great names in high school football, a short punt, and the Wildcats will get the football at their 40-yard line. On a 15 yards. So they'll bring out Ethan Garza, who is, well, kind of the third quarterback they've had this year. They started with Tarwater, he left, and then they, they've moved all over the place. Cummings says that it's been kind of thrill a minute at the quarterback position. Garza's a guy that they don't want to put a lot on, but they need him to be consistent. Corn showing pressure for Desmond Lockett. A little screen, little pass to the outside. Here comes Hundley. Hundley down inside the 40, inside the 35. And Jai Hundley with a nice play to get things started for the Wildcats. Offensive line has been thrill a minute for the Wildcats. It has. Uh, you know, again, they're just kind of beat up up front. We'll see how they do tonight. They've got some skill guys to get it to, Jai Hundley. And then, of course, Elijah Rogers and Brandon Hayward. We'll go to the ground this time. Nothing doing, at least initially. And then Dejavis Dozier, the junior, on the run. Got some athletes for this Carnes defense. This is uh, this is not your mama's Carnes. They look really athletic. Yeah, Desmond Lockett, love him. Chris Hunter, same as well. And then the secondary, Walker Lockhart, right there at safety, patrolling center field. 
Wonder where the beef is. There it is, J.J. Ramirez. Second down and seven. Not quite three minutes into the game. How about this pass? Pretty nice pass off the arm of Garza. But better coverage by the talker himself, Terry Sutton. You know, more, more and more players doing that. Optional, the little safety. Yeah. I don't blame them. That keeps more people playing the game. Third down and seven. Garza's got athletes around him. Eliza Rogers, number one, and Brandon Hayward, 13. I'll swing this one out, and Hundley will drop it. What you're going to see that if you see that play like going forward, you'll see teams that get the the, cap, the protection cap in their skin of their helmet. You know what I'm saying? That way, it, you still have the the logo. It's not they'll, quite reached to that point yet, but you can bet it's coming. Well, they'll go for it on fourth down since you're kind of in no man's land. A fourth down and seven at the 28. It'd be a 45-yard field goal from here. Not exactly in the range of a lot of high school kickers. Garza will run the option. Pitch out, needing to get to the 21-yard line, and will he bat down inside the 21 for a first down? I think he got it running backwards. It's a great play by Dozier. Initial contact, Dozier doesn't have it, and then he knows where he's got to get and goes backwards down to the 21. Three five yards. Lock of the senior. Work on that. Tim Sharp, the referee tonight. Lock at 53 tackles on the year, two and a half sacks, eight tackles for losses, and obviously wanting to get his ninth was a little anxious. First down and five. They'll hand to Hundley off left tackle. A couple of yards, second down and two. And for this offense for Oak Ridge that is, has really been much maligned and has had a hard time getting their foot. I mean, they got shut out by Farragut 24 to nothing. A touchdown to get things started would be big. Eighth play of the drive, second down and three at the 14. Garza looks to throw, gets it to Hayward. Hayward sticks his head down and will carry defenders inside the five. It's a first down and goal. 12 yards on the catch for Brandon Hayward, the junior. And the Wildcats are set. On Oak Ridge right now, looking like the team that really wants it, kind of fighting through arm tackles. Uh, kind of pushing through, getting that extra little bit of yardage, go back to the fourth down. I mean, that was just great individual effort. Same thing right there with Hayward. We've got Dozier and Hunley. They'll give it to Dozier. Off right tackle, touchdown. Oak Ridge strikes first, a three-yard touchdown by the Javis Dozier, a junior, 6-0 with the extra point to come. A couple of lead blockers in there, including Hunley and Brian Kelly. Dozier walks in. When we had these teams a year ago, defense was optional. Are we expecting that again tonight? We'll see. We'll see how Carnes responds to the opening three and out and subsequent touchdown drive by the Wildcats. Extra point to make it 7-0 is up, and it is good. Let's take a break on FCA's Robbery Thursday, presented by Pilot Company. The Wildcats strike first blood up 7-0.
Sabbath during the days of Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve during the days of Adam and Eve. And our thanks to OEB Law, $1,000 going to the home school tonight. I think the Oak Ridge Wildcats as OEB supports schools all over East Tennessee and they'll be doing a game tomorrow night with Brad Jones and BBB 12 TV. Well, thanks to OEB Law. For the Carnes Drive, after a three-play New Yard drive and a punt, the Wildcats then went nine plays, 59 yards in 254, set up by a 15-yard punt, and Dozier goes three yards for the score and a 7-0 Oak Ridge lead. Deshaun Bishop, a 43-yard return to start the game, just itching to get his hands on the football again, and he will not. Well, if you have a student getting ready for that ACT, next one is December the 3rd. You're running out of time. You need to sign up because schools have raised those merit scholarships. The lottery dollars have gone up for 21 and above as far as the score on the ACT. Schools requiring ACT for admission. Trust my friends at Coons Cram Course to help your student be the most prepared that he or she can for the ACT at CoonsCramCourse.com. 7.25 to go first quarter. Oak Ridge up 7-0. Back comes Hayden Tarwater. First possession, incomplete pass, a five-yard run, then a five-yard loss. Now a fumble. Fumble the snap. And going backwards. And Deshaun Bishop says, that's cool. That's just four more yards for my stats. Second and 13 from the yeah, Tell me that's not what he's thinking. I, no, I don't think that's what he's thinking. Oh, okay. Uh, My bad. Uh, Brad Taylor's thinking we can't get buried early. We got we got to get some momentum right here. Flip the field, do something. We don't want to be punting after our, the last punt of 15 yards. You don't want to be punting again. Backed up against your own goal line. Loss of three yards. Tarwater hands off to Bishop, bottled up and will be corralled. Back at the 16, another loss of one yard. Yeah, that's a great play by 47, Tyler Pickens, the senior, 6'2", 205. Big kid, just steps up in the hole and makes the tackle alongside number six, Andrew Ferreira. Third down and 14, the Carnes offense tonight at this point, negative four yards. On five plays. Here's the sixth play. When they pick up the first down, they go a little screen action to Bishop. Right across the middle to Bishop. Look out here. Bishop past the 25, a shoestring tackle at the 28, and it's fourth down and two. Nice job. Same young man right there, 47, Tyler Pickens. A shoestring grab, Carnes will punt it away. And again, I think if you're, if you're Oak Ridge, you have to be very cognizant of the fake here. Carnes faked the punt against Campbell County, turned the tide of that football game. And then you need a better punt than this all the first time around if you're Carnes. And they will fake it right up the middle to Bishop, and Bishop will carry it past the 30 for a first down. Just like I said, you gotta be cognizant of it. I mean, it, it don't seem like they were. I mean, just able to barely hit the nose across the 30. Keeps the offense on the field. Carnes going with that old New York Giants look. Over the uniforms? On the helmet. Big stripe in the middle of the helmet for the pink out tonight. Big conversion there as Carnes goes into positive yardage. And the defense all over that, a gain of three yards. And there he is again. We'll call his name a whole lot tonight. Brian Kelly, a senior, six foot 190. Once again, to not sound like a broken record, who will be in the Commercial Bank Robbery Showcase playing linebacker for East Tennessee and may be trying to stop Deshaun Bishop again that night.
Gain of three inside handoff. Bishop will pick up a couple of yards and a third down and five. Oak Ridge defensive line, especially the interior, doing a nice job early in this football game. By the way, Bishop, we talked about how he is, you know, really matured, and he is solid as a rock. I mean, he's a he's a big, thick kid now. We saw him a couple of years ago at Campbell County that first night. He was a young sophomore, and now he's a. Uh, I mean, he looks like a college player. Yeah, he's got, his legs have gotten bigger, um, got bigger in the chest. Flag comes in at the top of your this, screen. This could be huge right here because if it's off sides, then it's going to be third and one, maybe first down. Coach, on the offense. Five yards and replay. Instead, it takes it back to third and ten. Not where Carnes wants to play at. Eric Kane, the third member of our team down on the sideline. You see? Yeah, Deshaun Bishop, 5'11", 200. I mean, he's up at least 10 pounds from a season ago. But, you know, for Carnes, they keep playing behind the sticks. And I think the most success they've had so far is throwing him the football. So third and 10, I'd find a way to get him the football through the air, obviously, because once you get him going, it just takes one play. And then a lot of times it's over from there. Third down and 10. And another stoppage comes in. Part the snap. Play a game on the offense. Third penalty of the night for Carnes. They keep going in reverse. This is not an ideal start for the Beavers. I will say this, to this point, they've had most success when they've tried to get out in open, out open space, play on the edge instead of trying to play, you know, in the belly of the defense. Third down and 15. Tarwater can step up and run, and he will, and will be buried at the 30. Put that one down as a leader in the clubhouse for the Joe Newbert collision of the game. Pretty good shot right here from an old teammate. As Price Davis comes in to lay the shot on Tarwater, fourth down and 10, and the Beavers will punt. Oak Ridge got two guys back deep. I'm not sure they need to be as deep as they are. They will punt this one Better away. Kick this time. Yep. Nice punt behind. The returners that will bounce down inside the 20. We'll take a break and a break for, uh, with our friends from Dynabody. So if you've got Christmas coming up, which we all do, and you've got someone who would like some workout equipment, look no further than the showroom at Dynabody. They have got so much equipment, new and used, for that person in your life who wants to maybe put up that uh, that home gym or they've got all kinds of equipment at the showroom it's in blunt county dynabody.com first down and 10 at the 18 yard line a 57 yard punt by Carnes after the 15 yard punt the first time Barnes defense stepping up, making the tackle with Dozier after a gain of uh, maybe two. Oak Ridge comes in three and four on the season, but as Austin said earlier, most importantly, two and one in region play. So despite all the challenges and struggles that they've had this year, the win tonight, and, and as Cummings and I talked about it. They'd be about right where we thought they would be. You had to anticipate that the defending 5A state champion Powell would win the region, uh, which they're going to, and that this game would be for number two. Flag comes in here. Try the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yards in the replay. I'll, I'll go with, yes, right where you thought they would be as far as in the region. But as far as, like, you know, I, I, I would say I'm a bit disappointed offensively. It, Cummings has always had such good offenses. They've struggled this year. Uh, and part of that is the fact that they're not real deep on the offensive line. 
and they've been trying to figure things out at quarterback. They're a better team. They'll be a better team if they once the playoffs gets here than they, they are right now. They were weeks Second down and 15. Garza throws this one to the outside. Nice moves here. Out to about the 25. Connor Cummings. Bring him third down, about four. Inching our way towards the end of the first quarter, seven nothing Wildcats. A third down and four at the 25. Play clock at 10. Garza will look to throw. Nice arm here. Gets it to the outside and look out. Here goes Brandon Hayward down the sideline, slung down at the 38 yard line. After a gain of 37 yards. Carnes gave a little bit of cushion there. Oakridge took it. And then Hayward made a guy miss. Right inside. Uses the speed. Finally, Lockhart gets him down. It's a thing, if Oak Ridge can get the football to some of those guys, Rodgers and Hayward, out in open space, they've got the athletes. After one, Wildcats have a 7-0 lead on FCA's Robbery Thursday, presented by Pilot Company. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Pilot Company, Ted Russell Ford, Food City, and Lincoln Memorial University. Football is back, and OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. I chose LMU because I wanted doors to open for me. For my future to have endless possibilities. To know I could become anything I wanted to be. Objection, Your Honor. I always wanted to say that. So whether I wanted to be a veterinarian, a high school teacher, let's turn to page 32, or a successful dentist, I knew LMU would help me get there. All I had to do was open the door. Hi, I'm Laura Ash. I'm a State Farm agent in Farragut. I've been an agent here for 14 years and I'd love to earn your business. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're there for you if you're buying a home, a car, or you have a teenager that's starting to drive, we can help with all of that. We'd love to earn your business. When it comes to the game of football, teamwork is success. When it comes to customer service and business, that team approach is just as critical. That's why we're such believers in our friends at Exterior Home Solutions. We have seen firsthand how Exterior Home Solutions has supported our community and treats their customers just like family. So when it comes to roofing, siding, or maybe a complete overhaul, Please make Exterior Home Solutions your first and only call. Community banking is about location and much more. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of the people, families, and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank, life made better. Football is back, and OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense. Call OAB Law and turn your wreck into a check. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you in part by Knoxville Orthopedic Clinics, proud orthopedic provider for the Rivalry Showcase. Second quarter is brought to you by a fellowship of Christian athletes, the ministry changing the lives of so many athletes all over Tennessee. Time now for the State Farm T-shirt toss. Hey, look, there's people wearing number one up there. Janette Rogers, Jessica Green, Laura Ash, and uh, Scotty Dykes. Seven nothing Oak Ridge as we go to the second quarter. Jersey, if you couldn't tell. First down and ten at the 38 for Oak Ridge. Oh, oh. 
Inside handoff, off left tackle. Look out here. Down the sideline, looking for the end zone, and finding it is Dejavis Dozier. A 38-yard run, no flags. I'm looking at the officials. I thought they were saying maybe he stepped out, but apparently it is a touchdown. Tight ropes are right there. Yeah, I, I thought they were looking at that and having a discussion, but Dozier goes 38 yards for the score, and the Wildcats up 14 to nothing if the extra point goes through. is up and it is now 14 nothing nice run there by the junior running back around left end and tight ropes the sideline right there yeah ducks right in there and ducks in for six second touchdown of the night for Duke. four plays 82 yards 38 yard touchdown Well, the cheer dance spotlight is brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions, and it is Sasha Umanski, senior Oak Ridge cheerleader. And our thanks to Exterior Home Solutions. Find them online at exteriorhomesolutions.com. 14-0 Oak Ridge. And you never know what you're going to get in the game. I think we're still going to have a really good football game. Uh, but for Carnes right now, kind of feel like they've been socked in the gut. Well, I won't say this is a must score drive, but it's a must score. A returnable kick from the five yard line. And nice job by Oak Ridge bottling up Terry Sutton. Well, if you'd like to make sure that every grave of every veteran in Knoxville, all 18,000 have a wreath this Christmas, make a donation at knoxwreaths.org or at a game. Incredible numbers again this year, over $10,000 donated here just with Rivalry Thursday. Look for the veterans who are on site or online at knoxreads.org to show your support. Off left tackle, here goes Bishop. Bishop turning on the burners to midfield. Bishop inside the 20, see ya. 85 yards for Deshaun Bishop. Carnes needed a play. They got it. 14 to 6 with the extra point to come. And it happens that quickly. If you look at the defender. What's the angle? And the angle that he had. And Bishop just says, I'm faster than you are. <laughs> and Bishop just kind of laughing about it. Now there's a man down back at the 17 yard line for Oak Ridge who is still down. Apparently the player who's down is Price Davis, number 10. Well, you can bottle Bishop up, bottle Bishop up, and then all of a sudden, chum. Well, there, there were two guys I thought were going to catch him there. I thought he was going to come back, and the speed just took over. And, and, and the one player had the, the angle on him, as we talked about.
Obviously a 15 yard penalty against Carnes after the play. As Price Davis will make his way to his feet and off the field. If I'm Oak Ridge, I make him take it on the kickoff. Give me 15 yards closer. If I'm in high school football, I take it on the extra point and take a point off the board. Because in a game that could be a close game, 15 yards right here, could be one point for sure. Maybe. I don't think you could argue either way. Is no, a you're bad right. Decision. You're right. You're right. I definitely see your point. Sit on the kickoff. So Brad Taylor agreed with you. No, he's on Oak Ridge. So he was on uh, Carn. So Oak Ridge would have. Oh, excuse been the me. One. Excuse me. Scott Cummings agreed with you. Yeah. yeah. Blake Dawson in to attempt the extra point. I enjoy trying to read the lips of the officials since the uh, mics are. I can see that Blake Dawson for the extra point, and it is up and good. 14-7 Wildcats. <laughs> That was an impressive drive. One play, 85 yards to Sean Bishop. Coming up at halftime, it's the Matlock kick for tires. The Carnes band will be out on the field marching tonight. Uh, good news when it comes to FCA and our Friday night preview with Zach Nelson at halftime on the LMU halftime report. So second, by Zach. second quarter's been a thrill a minute. 30 seconds in, we've had two touchdowns. So the stats kind of changed just a little bit. Changed the rushing yards from 5 to 90 for Carnes and Oak Ridge, obviously. Their numbers changed as well. Yeah, they added the 38-yard touchdown run. So they're So in other words, 55. Joe McNish's first quarter stats brought to you by OEB Law are already dated. Well, they're 100% accurate. Problem is, is we've had a lot happen in the 30 seconds of game time since Joe <laughs> sent down the stats. <laughs> to the track. Well, we had over 100 yards of offense yeah. in in 30 seconds. So, a year ago in this game, uh, the storyline was that Oak Ridge hadn't lost to Carnes in over three decades. Storyline tonight is, is Carnes is looking for two in a row in the series. I have a surprise for you tonight, by the way, Austin. Go ahead, man. Tell me that. All I can tell you is Jersey meets Oak Ridge. Is Jersey meeting Big Ed? That's the that's the the real deal. Nice job here by the up back to pick this one up, and this one will be returned inside Carnes territory. Eric Kane, an injury update. Yeah, unfortunately, it was Price Davis that went down on that long touchdown run from Deshaun Bishop. I'm being told this is actually the cousin of T. Higgins, Oak Ridge. Uh, great, but it uh, looks like he's got, uh, he's over here sitting on the sideline. He's not moving. Looks like he's in some pain, so I wouldn't expect to see him back in the game anytime soon. Okay. I never really understand the short kickoffs like that. Well, they're trying to squib it, uh, just to you know, try to give their guys. 46 yard line, high snap, inside handoff to Hunley. Number seven, Jai Hunley on the carry. And almost the 40. Gain of about five and a half. High snap and quicker than a hiccup, a gain of, uh, Joe calls it six, so second and four. Brings up second and five from the 40 yard line. Side handoff to Hunley again. He'll get the first down inside the 35, down to the 33. Hunley and Elijah Rogers uh, were members of the uh, West Rebels a couple of years ago, then made their way over here to Oak Ridge. You know, I keep saying it just seems more and more like every time you talk about a player, you have to say where he used to be. Yeah. The transfer from, the transfer from. And it was just on the college level, and now it's, it's on the high school level. 
Gain of nine. Speaking of West, they got their uh, they got the Lewis Bowl tomorrow night. Jackson Lewis goes against his dad's alma mater, Cock County. I'll give Jackson the upper hand tonight. Inside handoff again. Hunley backing his way down to almost the D1 red zone, just outside the 20. Seems like the Wildcats have found something right in the interior of that Carnes Beaver defense. At some point, Carnes is going to have to steal a possession here because they got spotted 14, and then Oak Ridge does get the ball to start the second half. Carnes showing a little pressure. They will back up. Garza will take a shot. Catch is made, looking for the end zone, not quite getting there. They'll call the ball down as Cotter Cummings makes the grab. It's first down and goal at the one yard line. It's just a straight jump ball. It's your man versus theirs. I don't know if Cummings ever had the ball. When you look at the replay, he was fumbling that thing all the way down to the ground. First down and goal off left tackle, touchdown. Jai Hunley for the score. And 20 to seven Wildcats with the lead with the extra point to come. Same formation as they scored their first touchdown on. They go left this time, they went right last time. First time it was Dozier, that time Huntley. We've got uh, the backs combining for three touchdowns to this point. Dozier with two, Huntley with one. Extra point for the Wildcats off the foot of David Wilson. Snap is back, kick is up, and they come real close through. 21 7 Wildcats. Let's take a station break. Jai Huntley making his way to the maroon turf. Well, aerial coverage is brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions, roofing, siding, uh, windows, all available by Exterior Home Solutions. Five plays, 46 yards in 2-11. Ty Hunley, a one-yard touchdown run, and 
Austin, you are correct. Beavers at this point are going to have to answer every time and steal a possession somewhere. Yeah, at some point. They're going to have to get a turnover. Watch they flip. And that one's going to go to the end zone. You won't be returning that one. Well, Frank Gambuza is here tonight for the Gambuza's game night makeover as Jersey meets Oak Ridge, Austin Price. No, it's Jersey meets Big Ed. <laughs> Jersey's going to Big Ed's right after this interview. <laughs> what, what do you get on your pizza, Frank? <laughs> no, no, if it's good pizza, you don't get nothing on it. Oh, you just go cheese and marinara? The, the worse it is, the more stuff you got to put on it, the better it is, nothing. Cheese and marinara, that's it. Okay, all right, who we got down there? Hey, we got Eli, he's a senior here at Oak Ridge High, and uh, you know, I think he represents the mascot quite well. Well, he looks, <laughs> he, he looks like a wildcat, don't you think? He, 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 he is wild something. Okay, yeah. so what, what's the plan here? Well, we got Garrett from uh, Gambusa's Barbershop on North Shore. He's getting ready to do Eli's hair. And uh, we're going we're gonna to take a lot of his bulk out. Uh, actually, I'm hoping it matches my color because I need some of it. So, so. E so, Eli, how much are you willing to allow them to do with whatever that is on your head? Um, Not too much, but, I mean, it's about time for a haircut. Is it? Okay. okay. <laughs> so you give them free reign. I mean, they can do what they want to do. Yeah, he didn't go that far, Mark. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right, but well. it, but he's, he's been a good guy about it. We're, we're going to take a lot of his bulk out, make him look a little bit more modern as opposed to just uncapped. Sounds good. All right. Good luck. We'll uncapped check back with like you. My Mark, neighbor before Jordan. I go, uh, you got a new viewer tonight I want to shout out to. It's my grandson, McCray. Okay. He's watching. Okay. Hey, McCray. <laughs> What's he call you, by the way? Huh? Pop 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 Pop. Pop Pop. Yep. Pop up. Okay. Pop okay. Pop. That's me. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you at halftime. All right, buddy. Thank you. Well, while we were away, uh, a loss of one yard. Well, we had an incompletion and a loss of one yard, and we're sitting here now at third down 11. It's quickly becoming danger zone time for Carnes. Tarwater under duress throws this one into the ground. And we'll hear about it. From the Wildcats. Second Carnes, three and out on the night. So fourth down and 11, third punt of the night already for the Beavers. Six and two on the season, but uh, right now in trouble. He literally could have take off, taken off running. Everybody for Oak Ridge. That happened turned. earlier as well. Yeah, everybody for Oak Ridge turned and just ran backwards. There's a flag down at the 44. But legitimately, I think the coaches for Carnes have got to say on the next punt, I agree. give it a second. Have the same, same thing happened on the first punt of the night. When, they, when he punted 15 yards, he could have ran it for 15 yards. Yeah. Eric Kane, what's up? Yeah, I was going to say this Oak Ridge offensive line's really found a groove. You mentioned the interior of the Carnes defensive line. That's kind of where they're attacking. But that last touchdown run went right off the hip of Cooper Williams, a sophomore who's one of those reserve offensive tackles. Is we're going to get a holding call on Oak Ridge here. But they're going to be serving back behind the chains here. But still, that offensive line, a makeshift offensive line, has looked really good so far tonight. Yeah, they have. Well, I mean, they scored 21 points in just over a quarter. And for an offense that uh, had been sputtering, to put it mildly, tonight they look like Eric Coriel's Cardinals. Garza will hand off inside to Dozier, and Dozier taken down at the 36-yard line, a gain of two. Boy, big possession here for Carnes. Huge possession for Carnes defensively, and they've not shown a pulse to stop Oak Ridge tonight. They had him in that fourth down and seven on that first drive, and once Dozier picked that up, it's been tough sledding to try to slow down the Wildcats. Second and eight for Garza, the junior quarterback. And it's 36. Garza That's will a flag. It's motion. Swing this one out to Hunley, who drops it again. So Carnes will have a decision to make. Do they make it third and eight, or do they make it second 
and 13. What do you do? Um, Doing the play, illegal motion on the offense. Number 13 was not set. Uh, Take it. You know, I would decline it and just try playing third down, but that's me giving Oak Ridge two plays. Uh, it's five yards, three plays, second down. Second down. Well, he took it. Paramount to win this down. Alex Idle, the middle linebacker, number 45, a sophomore we keep seeing. Garza rolls left, throws this nice right deep, pick. it's intercepted. Heading the other way is Terry Sutton, the junior, inside the 35, down to the 34. Sutton is a guy who loves to do some jawing, and you can tell when he gets up. When I was over at the uh, Carter game, he had the whole student section uh, for Carter talking back to him. Tried to force it to Elijah Rogers, and just a great play that time by Sutton. There's a flag down on the field back at the 17. We do have an interception. We have a personal foul on the white team. 15 yards, still first down white. Don't know what the personal foul is, but 15 yards will move that one back uh, almost to midfield at the 48. You know what Deshaun Bishop's thinking? That's just 15 more yards. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But that's a huge stop, though. Again, I, well, you had to have it. Well, to you me, need another one, but you had to have one. Carnes has got to stay within seven going to half. Oak Ridge gets the ball to start the second half. You don't need to be down 14. And then if Oak Ridge goes and scores, be down 21. That would be really, really tough. Fish him in motion. They'll fake to him. Now they'll throw to him behind the line of scrimmage. And Bishop will pick up the yardage of a couple of yards. Should have been a loss of five. Again, that's all Bishop. And again, that's the added strength. His lower body. I mean, the stiff arm. Watch when they throw to him. It should be a, a five-yard loss. He, he's bottled up, right? Bottled up in. Okay, I'm going to push you down. I'm going to push you down. I don't know who six is. We know it's not Andrew Ferreira. He's no longer with the team. It's Terrence Anthony. There we go. Terrence Anthony wishes it was Andrew Ferreira after that play. <laughs> Tarwater looks to throw across the wow. middle. Oh, oh man, he almost, almost one handed snagged that thing. Boy, Matthew Eldridge almost came down with a one handed grab with the pink gloves. Again, though, Carnes playing back here at third and eight, third and nine. That's not their game. Their game's playing at third and two, third and three, where they give it to Bishop to pick up first downs. Watch Eldridge. Almost. Almost. Third down and eight, 0 for 3 on uh, fourth down, but it's third down right now. So uh, uh, we'll hold, hold that card for a moment there, Joe McNish. Thank you. I think what he's saying is if you don't get it, are you going for it on fourth down? Not going to matter. Bishop off love tackle like a bull in a china shop down to the 35. It's a great way to describe it. Sure. Get the 710 split for the bowling ball right there. <laughs> Actually down to the 34. Clock at 640 to go in the half. Beavers down two scores. It feels like Oak Ridge has dominated this game, but if Carnes goes and scores here, it's a one-score game. They'll fake it to Bishop Go! Oh, they'll bat this one up in the air. And incomplete. That was a little scary if your Carnes, Tyson Taylor, number 18, almost made the grab off the machine. Doink. Good job of getting the hand up. By 20, Deshaun Nolls. Second down and ten at the 46. Are you out Second thinking yourself if you don't just give it to Bishop 50 times a game? No, I don't. I don't think so because 
you have to be a little more balanced. Bishop with a forward lean gets it here. A forward lean into the secondary back and inside the 20. And you saw him before the snap. He leaned, he leaned. He was like, give me the ball. End zone view right here. Great job. Wow, look big, at the block. big block that time by 76 for Carnes. Brody Castle, yep. the junior. 15 carries, 113 yards. So 85 yards on one play helps. Yes. Into the D1 red zone. Wildcats down two scores. They'll give it to Bishop again, the patient running. And down to the 15, trying to follow Cassell. Cassell kind of missed everybody and found himself in no man's land. Now, you're out thinking you're sacked. If you don't give it to if him every time? Give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Brad laughed when I asked him the other day. I said, you still giving it to him 50 times a game? And he goes, well, he is our best player. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the response. They have at times when they needed to. Um, but for the most part, they've kind of, you know, kept him fairly low, you know, which is which is good for him. I mean, again, running backs only have a, they have a shelf life. Is he big enough to excel at a power five yes. level? I mean, I yes. know he's committed to Coastal Carolina, but as a stoppage comes in here. Jamie Chadwell is getting a – jewel of a player. Timeout Carnes reached 4.45 to go in this first half. Timeout Let's take a break Carnes. and a break from our friends at Ford. A, a Carnes alum talking about Andy White. All right, Andy White is here, owner of Ted Russell Ford. First off, I get my new truck, right, that I'm going to be able to put on TV next week to drag this production unit? I believe finally, yes. It's been a lot of, uh, quite a while, but you've been very patient, and thank you. All right, we've got a box on the back. It's an F-450. You will see it from Ted Russell Ford next week. I can't wait to show it. You are a Carnes alum. How cool is it for you to see what Brad has done with this program? Well, I think I think the longevity of having Brad around for as long as he's been here has been unbelievable. And to have uh, such a great number of kids out there and, and some good kids at that, good character kids, that's going to build this program for the future. Well, and that's the thing. He was, and we've said this on the broadcast, four years ago we had nine ninth graders on the team. He had 31 right now. Yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. I, I don't think we had 31 kids playing varsity when I was there four years. So I, that's a great accomplishment for the coaches and Brad and the administration and the kids for giving their all. I've been talking about the, the Ford F450 truck. We've got this 10-foot box on the back. I'll be dragging the production unit, and we are so excited to get it tomorrow, and we'll have it in play and in service as we'll inch our way up as the camera tilts up. We'll have it next week at South you, Oil, you, dragging you, the production you've unit. You've been saying that for weeks, though. No, we just, the, the, you've been saying that for weeks, and here's how I know, because all car dealers are having trouble getting new cars in. No, 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 the car's been here for a while. It's just getting the box on. Oh, the box on. Yeah, yeah, so we got the box finally done. That, that's out of their hands. Oh. I'm just saying, I, they have worked so hard for me, Ted Russell Ford, to get this truck, because it's hard, and I'm excited about getting it. I'm oh, just yeah. So you'll see it next week, not that you oh. care. But anyway, I and can. I know all car dealers are looking forward to getting all the chips back and so they can start having full lots again. Second down and one. Bishop will lose a couple of yards. As the Wildcats shoot the gap and get in the backfield. And there he is again. Tyler Pickens. Got three or four tackles tonight in this first half. Third and three. Four down territory for the Beavers. Ooh, a little eye formation here. Lead blocker. Third down and three off left tackle. Bishop will follow his blocker, stick his head down, and get the first down down to the eight first down and goal. The best thing going for a car here, too, is his thrill with a lot of clock. <laughs> Again, getting this thing to halftime, only down seven when you... Got a lot of turf on the near side of the field for a really fast running back on the ninth play of the drive. I thought I might just throw that out there. Three and a half to go first half. 21-7 Oak Ridge. Bishop up the middle. Touchdown. 
Deshaun Bishop, his second touchdown of the night. The first one, 85. The second one, eight. Eight for eight. Eight yards. That's good. For eight. For six. Potentially seven. Or maybe they go for two and eight. Well, I'll say this. When, when we had him a year ago, Barnes was behind Oak Ridge for, you know, most of the first half. And then in the second half, Bishop started running wild, and uh, and Carnes got the win. Next point is up and good. 21-14 Wildcats. Bo both teams are coming so close to blocking the extra points. Yeah, well, the first of our two E2 Sports Scholar Athlete to the game. And for the Beavers, it is Tyson Taylor, who has a 4.3 GPA. Congratulations to Tyson doing it uh, on the field and in the classroom as well. Games tomorrow night, what a key night in 6A as Farragut travels over to Bradley Central. Bearden travels over to Cleveland after the Cleveland upset win over Maryville. Uh, I, I still would pick Maryville to win that region. I still think they run the table. They win at Bradley to finish the season, and Maryville's still the number one seed. But right now you look at the region standings, and you're like, wow, it's like a four-way tie. Still have to just keep plugging if you're Bearden and you're fair. You get a lot to play for, a lot to play for if you're Bradley Central. Yeah, Farragut and Bradley, they seem to play important games every year. Last week we talked about middle eight. Last four of the first, first four of the second. Yep. This is big right here for, for Carnes to get off the field, not allow Oak Ridge to go in here and score and make it 28-14, getting the ball to start the second half. Remember last week, Gibbs, that's where they really kind of lost the game. And here we are, another one of those squib kicks. Picked up at the 30, taken down at the 38-yard line. Carnes drive nine plays, 48 yards in 345. A reminder, all the invitations have gone out to the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase presented by Food City. Saturday night, December the 10th, 7 o'clock at Anderson County High School. Uh, met this week with uh, Stellar Visions, going to help us with our sound again. And uh, the fireworks are going to be involved. we got a lot of great players going to be in that game. All the invitations are out, just like all the invitations are out for Eric Kane's wedding which is December 17th. They're not out because I didn't get one. Well, oh well. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Tarwater throws this one out to the near. Oh, the flag comes in early. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Five yards in the replay. Actually, I don't know. Hey, Eric, did you send me an invitation or did I get stiffed? <laughs> Oh, it'd be really embarrassing if I if I didn't on TV. But yes, it should you should have it. Check I'm with sure Dee Dee. I'm sure Dee Dee had a second care. No, me. no, my wife's out of town. It for doesn't the matter. It would have arrived before she left. Well, I know, but when she's gone, I don't check the mail. Okay. All also I do is just. And didn't know it was for me. His <laughs> wife had to tell him it was for his co. I said, "Who's invited us to a wedding?" And she's like, "Really? No, you don't know." And yeah. Like, no. When my wife's gone, I grab it out of the mailbox and I just stick it in a pile and I'll let her deal with it when she gets home. So it may be there. I don't know. <laughs> Just as long as the gift shows up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Down the sideline. Boy, a nice run. Gain of 12 yards. On a second and 15. And for Almani Rimbert. Put that one on the stats line. Brings up second and two from the 47-yard line. Well, the OEB Law Game of the Week on BBBTV12.com tomorrow night. Wartburg and Rockwood. Oh. Hunley off right tackle will get the first down. Boy, Carnes had an opportunity on a second down and 15. The question is, are you going to go to the wedding? When is it? December 17th. Oh, December 17th? Yeah. Yeah, it should be here. Eight days before Christmas. Thank you for clearing that one up. Yeah, I believe we will be here for that. I'll make sure I'm there. 
I want to see exactly who has agreed to marry him. Never met her. I talked to her on the phone when we were in New Orleans. She seems like a really sweet girl. I tried to talk her out of it. How weird is that? You just called his fiance and talked to her? No, this is the 47 the yard line. Phone. Catch is made. They'll cut back inside. Oh! A violent tackle. It was made by Desmond Lockett. Gain of four. Second and six now. That's a great block. Clock at two minutes to go in the first half. As Austin said, Oak Ridge gets the football to start the second half. So, well, if you're Carnes, you're glad you're back within seven, but uh, pass across the middle, catch is made down inside the 25 to the 20. And there's Hayward again. This is uh, setting up worst case scenario for Carnes because Oak Ridge is running the clock. They will take this thing down pretty close to the half and then potentially punch this in to go back up 14. You know, Hayward kind of burst on the scene as a, as a freshman, which it's, it's funny, those guys that they start early, it's like you feel like he's been around forever and yet he's a junior. Yeah, over at Oak Ridge. I mean, Oak, over Farragut, at Farragut. Farragut, yeah. 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 Still boils down to, you know, quarterback play, offensive line protecting for the quarterback. Down in 10, inside handoff to Hundley. Hundley sidesteps a defender, looks for the end zone, touchdown. 20 yards for Jai Hundley. And with one minute to go in the first half, it's 27 14, and Carnes will get the ball back again. And actually, the fact they scored so quick might be good for Carnes. They'll get a possession. What's mind blowing to me is you had it. When it I don't know. We, I don't think we can do this. We can only we can show the time in real time. But you go back. He was 10 yards deep in the end zone with a minute two, which means you know it should have been like minute three or four. Yeah. Now there's a minute to go. They just kept running the clock. Extra point to make it 28-14 for David Wilson. And it is good, 28-14 Wildcats. Watch Hundley again. Play designed to go to the right, the vision, the cut, and the score. Yeah, nice sidestep. Two touchdowns for him, two touchdowns for Dozier. Four total touchdowns and a two touchdown lead for the Wildcats. Coming up on the LMU halftime report, we got the Matlock kick for tires. Will we give a set of tires away tonight? We'll see in just a couple of moments. We've got the Corns band, FCA package, and our Friday night preview with Zach Nelson as he'll preview Heritage and Sevier County. Joe Osavet versus Todd Loveday. Hey, speaking of New Jersey. Yeah, how's Frank doing down there? Uh, Frank's doing great, but oh. Joe Osavet's from New Jersey. Oh. He's brought Jersey to Walland. <laughs> <laughs> Five plays, 61 yards, 228 off the clock, and it uh, resulted in a 20-yard touchdown run by Jai Hunley, his second touchdown of the night. Look at the game night makeover that's going on down there. Eli is turning into a new man. He's going to have a return here, Mark. Short returnable kickoff. I thought for just a second he might turn and hand off to Bishop, but uh, Terry Sutton's confident in uh, his own abilities. How great is this? One, one, one says 55 seconds backer and the other says 54, because there's two different. Which one are we going off of? That's the real question. One, one the Jumbotron says 55 seconds, the old school scoreboard on the north end, or the south end, says 54. My question is, is why do you have to make such controversy all the time? Well, why do you have to have, why do we have two different clocks? Eight, now they're synced. Three, 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 three. Bishop around left in, we'll call that a gain of four, second down and six. The clock is stopped at 48.7 seconds to go. Two timeouts left for Carnes. Off 
Obviously a timeout was taken there to stop the clock. They'll go to Bishop right up the middle. Bishop trying to bounce to the outside and will get maybe a couple of yards, maybe three. Now let the clock run. Really surprised that there's not a sense of urgency here. I think they're just going to let the clock run down. Are you surprised by this? Uh -huh. I mean, it's not, they're not built to try to go one minute, though. Well, I'd at least snap and give it to Bishop one more time. Huh. Now call me surprised. I, I would want to push the envelope and try to score on every time I got the football. Why don't you give us a call right here? We're going to give away a set of tires right here? Yes or no? Right now. Give it to me. No. Yes. Yes, we are. Do you it's say this kid's going to make it? Yes. Put the dramatic music. Tony Budnick leads yeah, we'll bring the, the students onto the field we'll, with the Matlock kick for tires. Yeah, we'll bring the music in just to tease the Matlock kick for tires as Eric Kane is getting set up down there. I don't know. The kid that's down there looks, I mean, he's got big old sweatpants on, a sweat top. Eric, is this kid going to make it? I don't know. He, he's pretty confident that <laughs> we got that effort right here. He's a senior. How, how are you feeling? Uh, you look confident over here. It's about a 35-yard field goal. Yeah, it's going to be easy. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm making it regardless. All right, so are you prepared, Mr. Matlock, <laughs> regardless. To, to get four free tires? He sounds pretty good. I'll see how I can do it now. Yep. All right, guys, good luck. Let's, let's see what happens here. It's... A kick from the 25, so it's a 35-yard field goal. Is he going to kick like MJ or Ron Harper? That's the real. That's the <laughs> real question right here. Scotty Pippen. No, Ron Harper. I mean, he was over there practicing too. So, does he take three steps to the side? That's when you. Oh no! Oh no! That's when you say there's a chance. The kick is up. Ooh, look good for oh. moments. Oh. Push it too far to the right. Good efforts here on the <laughs> he Matlock kick up. for tires. Still gets a free oil change, though, so good job there. LMU Halftime Report, it is coming up next. Oak Ridge leads Carnes by a score of 28-14 here on Rivalry Thursday. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Commercial Bank, Humana, E2 Sports, and OEB Law. Do you want top-of-the-line fitness equipment for home, school, or work? New or reconditioned, Dynabody in Merrillville has everything you need to build that gym. Used equipment brands include Paramount, Life Fitness, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, and Precore. Reach for the power with Dynabody. Matlock Tire has a reputation for being a little bit old school. We're proud to be known for our outstanding hometown customer service. We've been doing things that way for over 60 years. But Matlock now offers new modern conveniences, such as family-friendly waiting areas, online appointment scheduling. You can even shop for tires and see our current stock right from your computer or smartphone. We invite you to stop into one of our five convenient locations or come see us online at matlocktireservice.com. Modern convenience, hometown service. Matlock Tire Service and Auto Repair. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Costa. Dr. Malone and I here at Knoxville Smiles are here to help you with any of your dental needs, whether it's a routine cleaning, a root canal, or if you just want some advice. Did you know that you don't have to settle for a denture anymore? My team and Dr. Malone are here to help you no matter where you're at and to help you figure out the truth for your dental health. So give us a call or visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Annie Jones. I'm the owner of Top Flight Athletics in Kingston. Hi, I'm Rob Black, Athletic Director at Fulton High School. When it comes to apparel and uniforms for our girls, um, quality and efficiency are most important. So I've got a lot of cheer moms to deal with. When we think of apparel and equipment vendors, you know, we're thinking about people who we can trust and people that we have a relationship with and uh, some, someone that will make sure we get what we want, when we want it, and it'll look the way that we uh, designed it. That and the fact that they are locally owned is the reason that we do business with E2 Sports. E2 Sports has been that for us, and that's who we're, we're in partnership with right now and couldn't be more proud to do so. Reach for the power with Dynabody. 
New Dynabody workout equipment is made right here in Tennessee and shipped across the country. Right now, get heavy savings during our fall clearance. Go online to Dynabody.com or call to get started today. Being a State Farm agent for over 30 years, I've walked alongside my customers through the most monumental times of their lives. I get to see the joyous moments, but also some of the challenging ones as well. Being able to be there for all of them is a great privilege. Being a mother and new grandmother myself, I can relate to my customers on a personal level. I know how important it is to have the right coverage for your family. Whether you're buying a new car, home, or starting a family, as a State Farm agent, I get the opportunity of being part of all of that. State Farm is here to help you recover from the risk of everyday life and the unexpected. An example is a claim my insured had a huge tree fell on his house. I went over to help while we were out in the yard looking at the damage. It looked like a bomb went off. The neighbors gathered and they asked who I was and he said proudly, my State Farm agent. They smiled at each other and burst into laughter and started singing, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. As I drove home, I was very proud to think I was a good neighbor and I was there for my customer. East Tennessee brings me so much joy. Our community feels more like a family and I love being a part of it in those roots and values. The mentality translates into our office each and every day. We work hard to provide top-notch customer service and make our customers feel welcome and feel like family. Being a State Farm agent for over 30 years, I've walked alongside my customers through all their life stages. Saving you money on your insurance is something I take pride in, but earning your trust is something I value just as much. You can count on me to be there through all life's joyous moments. Welcome to the Rivalry Thursday Halftime Report, brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. At the halftime score, Oak Ridge, a 28-14 lead. Wildcats get the football to start the second half. It is senior night here at Oak Ridge. It is fall break, all kinds of things going on. So only a pep band tonight for the Wildcats, which means that the only band playing at halftime will be the visiting band, that band being from Carnes. It's the Rivalry Thursday Sounds of the Band, sponsored by Gray Hodges Corporation, supplier of craft made cabinetry. And a few announcements to be made before our Gray Hodges sounds of the band. By the way, to all local bands, it's 58, 60 schools or so, all East Tennessee bands, while we're waiting on the band, I'd like to invite you to be a part of our rivalry showcase band. You'll have the opportunity to practice at the University of Tennessee. The entire band will. The opportunity to play with complete fireworks that night, over $10,000 thanks to OEB Law. Going to be shot off during your performance at halftime and pregame when the national anthem is going off. If your band, you, all band members, invited to be a part of it, contact Ron Rogers. There's his email, rrogers886 at gmail.com. Let him know that you would like to be a part of the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase Band Saturday night, December the 10th at Anderson County is when the Rivalry Showcase will take place.
Behind the Band Spotlight is brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. And tonight, uh, being honored from the Carnes Band, Caroline Stork and Amelia Brown, the two drum majors for the Carnes Band, brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. the Carnes Beaver Marching Band brought to you by Gray Hodges. So the FCA Night of Influence is quickly approaching. It is Monday night, October the 24th. Sponsorship levels are still available, but I'm going to tell you that the response has been overwhelming. Mark Rick making it in. He's dealing with Parkinson's disease, and so his story is very inspirational. I'll be there that night at the Knoxville Expo Center. Really looking forward to hearing the former Georgia head coach Mark Rick speak at the FCA Night of Influence. All right, time now for our FCA Halftime Spotlight, and for that, Austin takes us over to Gibbs to introduce us to Eli Hubs. Here at Gibbs with Eli Hubs. Eli, playing linebacker senior year. Um, you kind of soaking up every little bit of moment that you have left, whether it's on the practice field or hanging out with your buddies in the locker room? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, every moment every moment counts. I mean, this last year with my buddies, last year with the underclassmen, I mean, last year of high school, so soaking up everything. All right, so you wear the number 40. Tell everybody why you wear that number 40. Uh, just to honor Pat Tillman, what he did for this country. I mean, left the NFL, left millions to go and you know fight for us so when did you start learning about pat tillman and and you know kind of how did that kind of sweep that up in you to want to honor him that way uh dad told me about him when i was in middle school i'd say about the sixth grade and i think about eighth grade you know he got me a book boots on the ground by dusk and his mom wrote that and that's when i really started you know looking into it what do you like most about the game of football the contact i like the contact and I like, you know, I like working together with a team. You know, it's fun. You you are very team oriented, not individual oriented, which I know this is this makes you uncomfortable at spotlighting yourself. But when you look at, you know, kind of where this team can go, what are the strengths of this team? I mean, if everybody does their job, I don't mean I think we can do anything. You know, we we have a lot of talent, skill wise, and you know, up front, I think we can go. I, I mean, we can do anything. I think. All right. Once football's over, you'll switch to wrestling. You lost in the state championship match a year ago. That's such an accomplishment. I, I know wrestling's something you kind of got into as a freshman to kind of help with football, but then you've genuinely learned to love it as much as you do football, if not more. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got the best coaches in the state. I mean, Coach Pittman, Coach Bill, Coach Joe, Coach uh, Troy. I mean, Coach Sp yeah, I said Coach Spencer, but they're all great. I mean, if you want to get better at football, definitely, you know, get into the wrestling room. What's allowed you to have the success you've had? Uh, a lot of a lot of that to do is my practice partner uh, pushing me, uh, coaches pushing me. I mean, the practices aren't easy. You know, they kind of prepare you for everything. So, I mean, we go to a lot of tournaments. I mean, we wrestle all the time. So that helps escalate into success. All right, once Gibbs is done and you're off to school, you're wanting to get what, a pilot's license and yeah. go into Air National Guard? Yeah. To take me through that, I mean, where does that come from? Uh, I've always wanted to join the military. I mean, that's always something I want to do. I mean, a lot of my family has gone and, you know, served in the military, and I think, you know, I should do it too. I mean, just 
give a few years of your life for your country. All right. He's got a really good head on his shoulders. He's got a big heart for the country. Eli Hubs here at Gibbs. The Carnes band continues to play down on the field. 28 to 14, the halftime score. Time now for our FCA Dizzy Bat Race. We've got prizes on the line, Eric Kane. Yeah, we do. And so real quick before we get started, we got we got Bryson here from Oak Ridge. He's wearing a JD Martinez jersey. Nice. All right. We got Riley here from Carnes and he's wearing a tutu. So I don't know who's gonna win. I don't know who's gonna win. Alright guys, five spins around and then you go and grab the pylon. You ready? Get set, go. Two, three, four, three. Oh. And we have a winner. I don't know if it was five spins, but we have a winner of the FCA Dizzy Bat Challenge. Big thanks to FCA for helping us do this and everything else on our Robbery Thursday broadcast. More of the LMU Halftime Report. That's coming up next. It's 28-14 Oak Ridge over Carnes. You're watching the Rivalry Thursday Halftime Report, brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Okay, time for us for the, the reveal tonight of the Gambooza's Game Night Makeover. Frank is here tonight. Frank, I've, I don't know that I've looked forward to one more than this one because it was literally a, a, a shrub on his head. <laughs> Well, we were looking forward to it as well, Mark, and, and I think Eli is going to be quite pleased once he sees it. Uh, I, I think Garrett did a great job, and he also met his needs. You know, at the end of the day, we could do something that we think is fabulous and we know <laughs> looks good, but if the kid don't feel good about it, what good is it, right? What so, is it? If you look good, you feel good? Yeah, that's exactly right, but uh, he's, he's a great kid. He's going up to ETSU after he graduates Oak Ridge. Uh, him and Garrett vibed out real well, and uh, we got a new look. So he doesn't have a headset on him. I, he's smiling. That that tells me that we're good. Uh, uh, he wants to know how good we are because he sees that you're smiling. You like it? 10 10 out of 10. 10. Huh? Have you yeah, seen it? Yeah, I can see it right there. Okay, oh, you <laughs> see it on TV. Okay, <laughs> he's checking himself out at least. But uh, yeah, we, we're kind of get, getting him college ready, Mark, with his new look. Hey, Frank, I will say this. Um, it's a, it's an honor when you come. You better be there two weeks from tonight. I know your son went to Bearden. It's Farragut at Bearden. I expect to see you there. Uh, let me tell you what. If, 
we have bearded kids in our parking lot. Matter of fact, they all take up our clients' parking because that's how close yeah. our barbershop is to Beard. Okay. Farragut, I used to live there, so it's a okay. great rivalry. I will be there. Sounds good. All right. Great job, Frank. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Take care, Mark. So there's a tad bit of a large game on Saturday, which is a perfect time for you to do your tailgating before the game. It's Tennessee and Alabama, 3.30 on CBS. Food City, the official tailgating headquarters of the Vols and high school football in Tennessee, along with Pepsi and Frito-Lay. Place that order online. They'll have it ready for you. Foodcity.com is where you go and be a great day for tailgating outside Neyland Stadium on Saturday. Okay, so an important game of high school football tomorrow night that got started tonight. Yes, Zach Nelson, we're ready to go. What's the highlight game for you tomorrow? Yes, sir, Mark. A huge game in Class 6A Region 2. The Bearden Bulldogs traveling down to take on the Cleveland Blue Raiders. Both teams coming off a bye a week ago, but the week before, a couple of huge wins for both sides as Cleveland handed Maribel their first region lot since 2000. My goodness. While Bearden beat a really good Bradley Central team, a massive playoff implication are on the line in this yeah. one. Top four teams in that region all tied. Huge playoff implications in that one. Again, and I'll have Sevier County over at Heritage tomorrow night. Should be a sneaky good one yeah. over there in the mountain. Joe Osivet trying to get Heritage to where they haven't been in a very, very long time. Yeah, I'm gonna, I said this earlier, I'm going to head over to Heritage and watch you know, the Mountaineers at three and four. It's an important game against Sevier County. Going to be a good one tomorrow night. All of those at DiamondClearMedia.com. Uh, and there they are, and uh, we will see you tomorrow night. Thanks, Mark. All right, let's catch a break. We'll come back second half of FCA's Robbery Thursday presented by Pilot when we come back. Thanks for watching the Rivalry Thursday Halftime Report, brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Iris Networks, Knoxville Orthopedic Clinics, and Exterior Home Solutions. I chose LMU because I wanted doors to open for me. For my future to have endless possibilities. To know I could become anything I wanted to be. Objection, Your Honor. I always wanted to say that. So whether I wanted to be a veterinarian, a high school teacher, let's turn to page 32, or a successful dentist, I knew LMU would help me get there. All I had to do was open the door. Football is back. And OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will be your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. Safety, integrity, reliability. More people trust the Joe Newbert family to return their vehicle back to its original condition or better. Only Joe Newbert Collision Centers offer pickup and delivery worry-free insurance claim handling, and guaranteed repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. Insist on locally owned Joe Newbert Collision Centers. And drive safely out there. Being a State Farm agent for over 30 years, I've walked alongside my customers through all their life stages. Saving you money on your insurance is something I take pride in, but earning your trust is something I value just as much. You can count on me to be there through all life's joyous moments. Real comfort, real food, real good. For almost 30 years, that's been Aubrey's commitment to you. But when everything changed overnight, you taught us what real good really looks like. You've called in takeout and delivery orders. And sometimes you just called to say hello. Thank you. Thank you for ordering, tipping so generously, and helping us keep people working. Because that's what real good really looks like. And we'll never forget it. Apparel for Playoff Friday is furnished by E2 Sports and Adidas. E2 Sports, online at myE2sports.com. Third quarter is brought to you by Pilot Company. Our thanks to the continued support of our great friends at Pilot. Take a look at the first half highlights. And Broke Ridge got started early. 
There's Jai Hundley with a nice little uh, catch and run here for Oak Ridge. That sets up the Wildcats deep into Carnage territory and Dozier goes in for six. Seven nothing, Wildcats with the lead. They extended to 14 nothing. Dozier again, 38 yards. Yeah, the job is Dozier the junior. And then here comes Deshaun Bishop, 85 yards. You think the Wildcats have got the angle, some angle, as Bishop does go, as Austin said, uh, 85 yards makes it 14 to seven. Uh, catch here by Cummings. I still don't know if he caught it, but anyway, oh, down it. to the one. Hunley gets in to make it 21 to seven. Back come the Beavers again. It's uh, Deshaun Bishop, second touchdown of the night, 21 to 14. Another touchdown for the Wildcats. They get the football to start the second half. And you take a look at the halftime stats brought to you by OEB Law. Yeah, fairly balanced from Oak Ridge. Carnes heavily leaning towards the run. Time of possession, ironically, in favor of the Beavers, but the scoreboard heavily in favor of Oak Ridge. You know, there are those games where you, you, you look at it and you say, if you're down two possessions, okay, you're kind of hanging around. Down three possessions, it, it might be game, set, match. So, you, so get a, get, you, you have to get off the field here. You've you, got to get scores, off, yes, yeah. If you're Carnes, you've got to get off the field. Because to this point outside of when Oak Ridge threw the pick, Oak Ridge has scored on every possession. So back to it. Once again, for all intents and purposes, the winner of this game gets a home playoff game. As Austin alluded to, there are some other scenarios that could change that for everybody. But it appears the winner of this gets a home playoff game. Is that, is that true? Again. Oh, he got it. Up, wow, what a this? play. That right there is spectacular. Talk about stealing a possession to start the second half. Talk about needing to get a stop. Forget getting a stop. How about stealing the football? And, <laughs> and that's that Terry could, Sutton again. That could not have been done any better. Watch this right here. They have him over here. They don't even realize he's over there. <laughs> Sutton is standing up against the sideline and nobody even saw him. <laughs> that tricky Brad Taylor. Kudos. So now Carnes gets the football. Inside Oak Ridge territory. Bishop will bounce off the defender down the sideline. Shot out of a cannon. See ya. Should have been tackled for a loss. Broke the tackle, 42 yards, a little shimmy shimmy, and a touchdown. 13 seconds into the second half. It's a one-score game. Talk about changing the complexion of the game. For 90. Riverboat gambler Brad Taylor goes with the onside kick and then gives it to that guy, Mr. Football. For, for three, for 99% of the high school players, that's a tackle for a loss. For Deshaun Bishop, that's just, get off me. Wow. That Jamie Chadwell getting a good one over there, Coastal Carolina. Yeah, he is. Extra point is up. It's good. 28-21. Wildcats. By the way, I didn't... I don't know if we've got the, the onside kick again because it I, I didn't even see where Sutton was. Yeah, he just lined up over there just barely it's, in play. Yeah, he was lined up over on the side. I don't know how he kind of snuck over there, but but he snuck. Watch 22 over. He's, he's talking he's, to the coach. He's talking to the coach with his back to the play, and they kick the onside kick, and it's all on one guy to go get it. <laughs> That's spectacular. <laughs> that is good stuff. Bishop, his third touchdown of the night, 16 carries, 176 yards, averaging 11 yards a carry. And our thanks to Andy White who came tonight. $1,000 going to the home school. That's Oak Ridge High School. And my thanks to Andy White and the pre-owned patrol over there, Ted Russell Ford. I get that new truck this next week for the production unit. Can't wait. 
My guys on the uh, they're, they're gonna do it crew. again. They've got this thing. <laughs> That's spectacular. <laughs> Here comes Sutton's like, okay, I'll come join you boys this time. Well, now you got to get a stop, right? Unless they're really going to go crazy right here with another onside kick. But, I mean, do you think Oak Ridge is going to be falling for that? Yeah. Eliza Rogers, one of the deep men, senior. And they'll squib that's, it again. That's off of Oak Ridge player. And lucky for Oak Ridge that Brian Kelly grabbed it. Yep. That might have gone out of bounds if he had not grabbed it. Well, yeah, some great photos uh, on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can see them all at dhil.photo or simply just take a shot of the QR code right there. You'll see great shots of cheerleaders, band, all kinds of pictures from all of our games this year simply by taking a shot of that QR code. 20 seconds into the second half, now 28-21. They'll get it outside to Dozier. Dozier with the block in front, using the speed inside the 35. And that quickly, a gain of 22 yards and a first down. Watch Dozier to the outside, gets a nice block downfield from Hayward. From the car, and first and 10 to the 32. Good look at Ethan Garza, junior quarterback. Inside handoff again. Really hard to, to get a stop when you keep giving him the ball basically at midfield. I mean, if you're going to kick the on, you better off just to kick the onside kick than, than the squib that's not really gaining anything. Second down and three back to Dozier off left tackle and close to first down yardage. He's kicking out of bounds. At least you know they're going to have the ball in their territory. I mean, if, if that's what you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, kick it and just kick it up as they get the ball to 35 versus. Well, yeah, they've been getting the ball in. in and basically, they fit the 50. I mean, it's basically been between the 45 and 50. One possession started at the 41. In Carnes, down, in Carnes uh, territory. Offsides on Carnes. Well, the snap. Freshman defense. Five yard penalty automatic. First. Jonathan Fellholter, number seven, handing over a first down. And that moves it uh, inside the D1 red zone that quickly. Garza will look to throw, throws this one out for Rodgers. And flags come in from everywhere. Oh, you can't, can't put your hands on him that like that. <laughs> he basically just shoved him down. That's Terry Sutton again. Watch the pass here to Rodgers. During the play, pass to the friends. As bad as I the thought. Defense. Half the distance, replay the down. I mean, you got to give Sutton credit for turning and finding the ball. I mean, your coach. He was just turn. too handsy. He was too handsy with the Rock with Rogers. What it goes down to. Now you're first and goal at the nine. They go get that same formation they scored two touchdowns on. First and goal inside the 10. They'll hand it off to Hunley around left side looking for the end zone. And he will find it. Touchdown. We've played a minute and 40 seconds in the second half. And two touchdowns. That his third. Well, if you go back to the first three minutes of the second quarter, basically you've had five touchdowns in about four and a half minutes of real game time. But you still stole the possession. Are oh, they going to go for two? <laughs> go for two. Brandon Hayward <laughs> takes that one in. That one in for the two-point conversion. 36-21. Let's take a break. Now, if you like offense, you like this game. Wildcats up 15. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Pilot Company. Ted Russell Ford. Food City, 
and Lincoln Memorial University. Do you want top-of-the-line fitness equipment for home, school, or work? New or reconditioned, Dyna has everything you need to build that gym. Used equipment brands include Paramount, Life Fitness, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, and Precore. Reach for the power with Dynabody. Blue 2020 F-150 41990. Hut! Jake drops back. He's got a deal wide open. The crowd goes wild. With savings, whether you're looking for a low mileage pre-owned truck to tailgate in or a minivan to get the whole family to the game, the pre-owned patrol has what you're looking for. Only at Ted Russell Ford on Kingston Pike or Parkside Drive. Hey, this is UT head football coach Josh Heifel. It's football time in Tennessee. When the Big Orange play, you don't have to miss a second of the action. Before, during, and after the game. Just make sure your radios are tuned in to 107.7 WIVK. Or if you're on the go, download the WIVK app and listen anyway. Your flagship station for the Tennessee Volunteers. 107.7 WIVK. It's a Tennessee tradition. Hi, I'm Anderson County Head Football Coach David Gill, and I want to tell you about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions, East Tennessee's first choice in roofing. They've been servicing East Tennessee for over 20 years, achieving a 4.9 rating on Google reviews and are listed as a platinum contractor by Owens Corning. Financing is available. I invite you to learn more about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions on their website, exteriorhomesolutions.com, or give them a call at 865-524-5888. Fireworks for the Rivalry Showcase are sponsored by OED Law. Now the Smile Cam brought to you by KnoxvilleSmiles.com. My dentist, Dr. Malone, Dr. Costa, was in there just uh, earlier this week. And we're going to get a gold crown. Got a spot in there. I'm going to get a gold crown. Kind of like Ernest T. Bass knocked out three teeth, put the one gold one in the middle so it stand out real good. I was going to go with uh, John Bishop, Harry Moore, Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> they lost the gold tooth. I forget which one. Yeah, anyway, KnoxvilleSmiles.com. We digress. Harry, Harry. Yeah. Harry is uh, Joe Pesci. So Bishop is uh, is deep. They'll they'll switch. Kicker has to look up, decide who to kick it to. Doesn't matter if you go into the end zone. Hey, our Commercial Bank uh, salute to Stripes tonight is uh, not an official who is uh, who is with us tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact, Joe Weaver passed away uh, last night. A 28-year TWSAA official, uh, retired Marine, served overseas, um, and just loved by by this crew, by this uh, this chapter. And uh, so they asked, they called our producer Skip McMillan and said, "Could the salute to Stripes be for Joe?" A absolutely. Um, so our thoughts with the with this crew out there working with heavy hearts tonight. Tarwater looks to throw, throws it out of the backfield, and a quick five yards. Nice play to keep the defense honest to Tyson Taylor. And Brad Taylor gets 15 yards. What did he do? Well, he ran right up to the official. He was not happy about something. I, I, I love to see the. Uh, I mean, he is. Like, I mean, he is irate. I mean, you, Brad Taylor was a <laughs> laid back and nice guy, as you can see. I mean, <laughs> you just never see him rage like that. No. No. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike offense, 15 yards, go to the next down. Well, at this point in the game, and here it is. Okay, here, here apparently it is right here. We'll continue. Well, he's upset about the play. I don't know if he felt like his. Let's take a look right here. Well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see anything in there. We, we haven't seen a look that's shown us exactly what Brad would be so upset. But but I will say this: that's a bad spot in this game for Carnes to get that penalty. Yeah. Irregardless of what was said, that was a bad, bad point in this game for that penalty to happen. I mean, he, his team couldn't afford that. 
third down and 18 at their own 13 yard line. Yeah, it should, and the, and the, and the quarterback's trying to say it should be second down. Yeah, it should be second down. Is that what Brad's mad about? No, 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 no. He ain't mad about that. He's mad about something else. Again, we're not able to show the replay until you can't see it. It was, it was how the how the player was tackled or whatever. I mean, he is still after that guy. <laughs> Second down and 18. If they'd called it third and 18, he, he probably would be gone right now. They'll hand off inside to Bishop. Bishop will back his way out to the 18-yard line. Gain of six, and now it's third down and 12. Brian Kelly. So Bishop has caught three touchdowns this year. He's also thrown one. So there are times that he'll throw the football. Just saying, Mount not now might not be a bad the point in this game. Toss it out to him, let him throw. You, you got to get this first down. You're down two possessions. Darwin will fake it to Bishop. Will look to throw. Should have been caught out at the 28-yard line. Still would have been short of a first down, but Matthew Eldridge wishes he had that one back. Look at him. That's a big penalty. Third three and out. Yeah, instead of being second and five, it was third and a while, third and 18, or second and 18, but it was third and 12, now it's fourth and 12. Third three and out of the football game. Fourth punt coming out right here for Carnes. Oak Ridge with another touchdown can uh, put Carnes really behind the eight ball. Timeout taken here by Carnes. Eric Kane. What happened? In, after some investigative reporting down yes. here. Yes, okay, uh, <laughs> great. He thought that uh, there should have been a face mask called, so that's why he was upset. Okay. Well, the world will never know. So the timeout was taken by Carnes. And now Oak Ridge will run to the near side. And while we're doing all of this, let's take a quick break and a break from Dr. Johnson talking about concussions from KOC. Josh Johnson, Sports Medicine, Knoxville Orthopedic Clinic, educating you on concussions. So as a parent, as an athlete, a concussion is an injury that you don't want to push through. You have a headache, if you're dizzy, you have problems with lights or sounds. If you're a little foggy and hazy during a game, get off the football field. You can't athlete your way through it. Go see a professional, get cleared, get back to your sport. Great advice from Knoxville Orthopedic Clinic. So it's a fourth down and 12 for Carnes. I'm a little mystified as to why they would take the time out there as well, just to punt because you're going to need the timeout. So the first minute and 20 seconds of the third quarter, just we, everything was happening. And the last minute and seven seconds or whatever it is has been Well, yeah, Carnes only stepped, stepped 57 yard punt earlier today. They really need this here. That's not bad. End over oh, end punt. beautiful. Look at the bounce. That's so important to go catch it. Flip the field on him, 54 yards on this one. So after that 15 yarder, he has been spectacular. Next week, we'll be over at South Doyle. Carter at South Doyle in a key region game for both teams. Chandler Wilson, the quarterback uh, for the Hornets, who actually threw a game-winning touchdown uh, with no time left on the clock to beat these Carnes Beavers, 37 to 35, just a couple of weeks ago. Big, big, big win over Morristown West last week as well. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, Farragut at Bearden, very important game on that last Thursday night of October. For a home playoff game. And then into OEB playoff Friday. Garza with the quick pass. Let me ask you an interesting question during the, the break here. Which would, which would surprise you more of a game that you do not get in the playoffs? Would you be more surprised that you do not get Greenville-Anderson County in the quarterfinal or that you do not get West Powell in the semifinal? West Powell in the semifinal. Really? Yeah. You think there's a better chance Greenville or Anderson County loses before? Well, I mean, that's – I mean, it's – and I think you're probably getting both of them, to be honest with you. Yeah, look out here. Using the speed past midfield. And, boy, Dozier has really got a sixth gear. But there's a flag down at the 50. Still at the 50, and it's going to be a long game. But uh, Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to say the other way around. Just because it's got to take it to the fourth round. The other one's the third round. I don't think it's great with Anderson County. And listen, Ten listen. Run holding. Off in. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Unless, uh, unless Elizabeth is going to somehow upset Anderson County. I don't see it. Let's see if it's going to the third round. 35-34 when uh, AC and Elizabeth. I don't see anybody beating West. Until at least the fourth round. If then. Including next week against Maribel. Yes. <laughs> I was waiting for the response. I, I like them to beat Maribel next week. I was just waiting. I just, I, I don't think it's an indictment against Maribel. I mean, Maribel's really good. I think West is just that good. Well, and I think West beating Alcoa, who had just beat Maribel, gives West the confidence that they can beat Maribel. Sure. Second down and three. Dozier to the outside. Here's the speed. And taken down from behind. Football comes loose, but they'll say because of the turf. Eight of nine. What's the stat again, by the way? He's up to 99 yards on the night. What's the stat again? Nobody's beaten Maryville from Knox County since the one. 2000. 2000 Halls. Yeah. First and 10 at the 45. Garza looks to throw. Throw! Throws across the middle. Oh, catch. Brian Kelly, he does such a great work on defense. You'd love to see him catch that ball and, you know, have a big catch. That's a nice pass. That's a nice yeah. pass. You know, just again, as a reward. He, he, he you know, carries them on defense so much. Yeah, a little just, out there in front. Just a touch out in front. He's still a good ball. Second down and 10. Once again, Carnes down 15, cannot afford to go down three scores. Desmond Lockett, number 15, coming off the edge. They'll get it out to Hunley. Hunley breaking tackles, still running inside the 35 yard line. There is a flag down. Yeah, back at the 45. Hunley will look up and see it. And, Head back up field. Holding, then run on the offense. And this is where Carnes has got to get off the field. You're now going to have second and about 20. They've got to find a way to not allow him to get 20 yards and get, well, get how many back on the field. How many opportunities are you being given if you're Carnes? You've had two big plays that have both been called back because of all oh, there's Rogers right there yeah jeez <laughs> trying to pick his pocket almost Scott Cummings the new head coach at Oak Ridge time at West where he won a state championship made the move to Cleveland uh, back over to Halls, back in Knox County, and uh, replaced uh, Joe Gaddis in the offseason. This a lateral rushing yards for Dozier. Who will carry it back out to get about the 10 yards back and bring up a third down at 10. Oh. 
but uh, the foul people back there. Why would you say? As I said, I don't see West losing the fourth round, which gives the initiation. But Powell could. I don't think Powell will. But their 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 region is tougher than West region, so their path is going to be a tougher path. Sure. I completely agree with you. I'll I'll defend you on that. But they're getting healthy at the right time, and, and the oh. best thing going for them is the running game for Potts because not everything is on him third with down this and, team. Third down and 10, a timeout taken here for Oak Ridge. That, that, that little sophomore running back they have is, whew, it just makes them so much more balanced and so much more tough to, to defend. Well, Eric Kane, what games y'all got on the radio tomorrow on WNML? Yeah, so tomorrow there is Catholic and Pope John Paul II. That's going to be a 99 1. The KOC game of the week on AM 990 is going to be Gibbs and York Institute. That game's going to be at Central High School, of course. And then over on News Talk 98 7, Hardin Valley is going to take on Maryville. So, Cumulus Knoxville has got you covered for high school football tomorrow night. I will say this, uh, Austin, about Powell. I was visiting with uh, Matt Lowe earlier today. They're kind of like that team in college football that lost the opener and then had the rest well, of the year forgot to get about it back it. because they forgot about him. And not a bad thing. You, you're coming off a state championship. You got a very confident group of high school guys. Well, you do. You have a bunch of veterans. The best thing going for them is the experience at quarterback with Jordan Potts. No, right, but what I'm saying three. is is the humility that they had the opportunity to learn from, and that may not have been a bad thing for No, power. no, 100%. They're, you know, they come back off that, that unbelievable state championship run and then lose a couple of games early, and that does kind of refocus some things. Garza looks to throw, and barring a flag, which I don't see, Carnes will get off the field. And the way that things work out as far as where games are, a third-round game of Greenville-Anderson County would be at Anderson County. A semifinal game at of West and Powell would be at Powell. That's right. Which means another opportunity for you to talk about the hamburger haze. <laughs> <laughs> it's one game, and he talks about it every time we go out there. Well, it's rather spectacular. Again, it was one game. We had a prevailing east to west wind, which is rare. First punt of the night for Oak Ridge. And this one's blocked. Beavers will pick this one up and look out here. Cutting back inside oh, and falling to the turf at the 10-yard line is Desmond Lockett. But the damage has been done. Carnes hanging around the chicken coop with a blocked punt. De De poor Desmond. He was going to get a touchdown. He tripped over the 10-yard line. I think he bumped into his own player is really what happened. He, he blocked makes, it, makes and he picks it up. Yeah. Now watch here. Able to uh, avoid the punter and then runs into his own guy. <laughs> he gets tackled by Kareem Ellis, his own guy. <laughs> Let me tell you what Sean Bishop thinks about that. I get another touchdown. I get another touchdown. Give it to me <laughs> 10. 10 more yards from me. <laughs> See, you jumped on my bandwagon of what I said earlier. Or Bishop or, says or, that's just four more yards for or him. Or I'm just making fun of you, man. No, but it's true. So they'll give it to Bishop off right tackle to the outside. Cuts back inside down to the one. And second down and goal at the one-yard line for the Beavers. Patient running, following his blocker, and taken down from behind. They'll run it again. Bishop inside, reaches across, touchdown. It. His fourth touchdown of the night cuts the lead to 36-26, and you would completely anticipate a two-point conversion, 36-27, pardon me. I would anticipate an extra point. Oh, they'll take the extra point, okay. No chase points right here. You noticed how every time you said you would do something, that's what Brad Taylor does, and I would uh, actually, say something Actually, was Cummings earlier that did what I thought he should do. Uh, this is Brad Taylor doing it. Right. Well, you don't chase points. If you don't get the two-point conversion, it's a two-score game. Your point is up and good, 36-28. Well, special teams doing it tonight for the Beavers in the second half. The onside kick to start the second half 
got him a Deshaun Bishop touchdown. The block punt by Desmond Lockett got Deshaun Bishop another touchdown. And they're still down eight. No. Let me tell you what got Deshaun Bishop another touchdown. Tell me. Kareem Ellis, who <laughs> bumped into Lockett. Kareem, yeah. Kareem Ellis, who tackled his teammate, Desmond Lockett, who was running for a touchdown. <laughs> Is that the Joe Nibri collision of the game? No, it's not because they got the touchdown. Had they not gotten the touchdown, I might have voted for that as the Joe Newbert collision of the game. Two plays, 10 yards, Bishop on the touchdown. Hey, look, two sponsors get love. Uh, the promos for one day signs and banners. Uh, Ann, JP, 865-525-5474. And they made the sign for Exterior Home Solutions. Beautiful shot high above Blank and Ship Field. And an end over end kick. At 45. Locker rooms. Sunday night, 10:35. Oh, are we talking about? Uh, are we talking? About, are we? What are we talking about Sunday night? Right now, all the ball fans are talking about Peyton Manning being the guest picker. <laughs> They're upset. You know. hey, hey, let me break it down for you. Is Peyton, Peyton aware of the? Uh, he's aware. And, and Peyton, and Peyton only. Here's the thing. Peyton only comes to big games. He doesn't come to UT Martin or Akron. Sure. And let, let me fill you in. Let me fill you in, some fans. Tennessee's not been very good the last 15 years. That's not on Peyton Manning. So, you know, he only comes to the big games, and Tennessee's just not won enough of them the last 15 years to matter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they feel like there's this curse. So get off his back, people. Yeah, correct. I mean, it's. I mean, I, it, I, I think it was funny at first, and now it's like, okay. What, the abuse of Peyton coming and then they lose because he's there? No, it was just like, the, oh, there's a curse, you know. And But now <laughs> they've, like, worn it out. Like, now, like, they got this, they're legit people that get on Twitter that are defeated right now because Peyton's the guest picker and he's going to be at the game. I'm not going to have any bearing on the, on the win. It's going to be Henry Hooker and his Bryce Young play. The Tennessee tackle, Jameer Gibbs. Chris Hunter on the tackle there makes it third down and three at the point. Ken Carnes get off the field. They call a flag. It's going to be five yards on Oak Ridge. We'll back them up a little bit more. Wow. Prior snap, first start, offense, five yards. That's the kind of stuff that just drives Scott Cummings crazy. <laughs> That drives him nuts, no question about that. Third down and eight. At the 48-yard line, a big third down for Ethan Garza and the Oak Ridge offense. Garza rolls left, wants to throw back left. It is set up for Dozier beautifully inside the 40. See ya. Dozier straight down the sideline. 52 yards, touchdown on third down and eight. A little running back screen play. Dozier's third touchdown of the night. Joining Hundley, who has three. Man is down at the 29, but watch the beautifully designed play and a great blocking downfield. Tell you what, Dozier's had himself a night, has he not? Yeah, I mean, right now at this point, I think both he and Hunley are are, are co-MVPs. I mean, you each have three touchdowns apiece. I'm cool with that. I just only got one hat. That's why you got to – let me tell you what Craig Price will tell you. That's my fault. Prior planning prevents pitiful performance. <laughs> <laughs> you have two hats. He also will tell you to kill him with kindness. Yeah. 
I'm just glad to know that your father had the impact that he did on your life as a man is down for the Beavers, and that may be Kareen Ellis. Dozier, a junior, along with Garza, the quarterback, a junior. Hayward, wide receiver, a junior. Your offensive line, starting tonight anyway, sophomore, junior, sophomore, sophomore, and only one senior. So, sketch us a quick break and a break right here from Exterior Home Solutions. Hi, I'm Anderson County Head Football Coach David Gill, and I want to tell you about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions, East Tennessee's first choice in roofing. They've been servicing East Tennessee for over 20 years, achieving a 4.9 rating on Google reviews and are listed as a platinum contractor by Owens Corning. Financing is available. I invite you to learn more about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions on their website, exteriorhomesolutions.com, or give them a call at 865-524-5888. Extra point is blocked. So much for the two-point conversion and the 15-point lead. Back to a 14-point game at 42-28. And Austin, not to give you the credit that you don't deserve, but you did call for that earlier in the game that they were coming close to blocking extra points. Well, both teams have clung. I mean, like Oak Ridge, every time Carnes has kicked an extra point, has been just like a snap yeah. of a finger away. Same thing with Carnes, if Carnes finally able to get home. Three play, 46 yard drive. Dozier 52 yards on the touchdown. Thanks to penalties, the touchdown was longer than the drive itself. And our thanks to our friends at Gray Hodges, Justin Ward over on the left, Rihanna Dugan over on the right uh, before we zoomed in. Uh, $1,000 going to the visiting school, that being Carnes. By the way, Justin graduated from Oak Ridge in 99. Rihanna graduated from Carnes in 2011. So a little bit of uh, interior fighting over at Gray Hodges about who they as a company are pulling to win tonight. But our thanks to uh, Charlie Morgan and all the wonderful people at Gray Hodges for their support this year. Wonder if they'll do the switcheroony again. Well, this time they just decided to kick it out of bounds. Let it go. Let it go. Why jump over there? Did they touch it? I think he jumped on the football. Yeah, they're marking at the 17-yard uh, line. How about that? You pooch. You said kick the ball out of bounds, and some guy runs over and jumps on it before it can get out of bounds. I'd love to see the replay on that. So back to Carnes. You know what Deshaun Bishop says? <laughs> That's cool. That just gets me 18 more yards. What's he at tonight? 192. He's averaging 220, see? First and 10 at the 17. Lined up in the slot. So they'll fake to him. Tarwater will roll left, can run and get nice yards. He will, and he'll step out at about the 25, call it a gain of eight. Once again, Tarwater, the transfer from Oak Ridge. The Oak Ridge quarterback a year ago, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions on the season coming into tonight's game. What was the final score of last year's game? Mm, you look it up. Oh, this should take him down from behind. Grayson Hope. a year ago, 42-35. Carnes. And they had not beaten Oak Ridge in three decades. 
Two of seven on third downs tonight are the Beavers. Third down and two. They'll go to Bishop off right tackle. He'll lean Make it forward. three of eight. He's got a great forward lean. He's always falling forward, always going forward. Little face mask. There. <laughs> Don't show it to Brad Taylor. <laughs> I'll have a repeat earlier. You wonder the Coastal Carolina how much of the you know knowledge about a guy like him, not that he needed any extra promotion, but that the, the, the connections over at Anderson County and, you know, they're able to say, hey, locally there's this kid that you really need to take a look at. High snap. They'll get it to Bishop off left tackle. I mean, I, I don't – it's not like Deshaun Bishop needed any promotion from – Brother to brother, defensive. Co yeah, I don't defensive think that had to do with it. Well, yeah, I just. If there was a pipeline and there were a bunch of local kids going there, then okay. Sure. Brings up second and seven from the thirty-one yard line. I have, you know, it's surprising. I think, I think Coastal has to be cognizant. I think they are still recruiting other tailbacks, just in case a bigger school comes in and tries to swoop in and you know still Deshaun away here at the last minute, which happens. With well, Bishop, awfully deep. Nine, they're, the, they're in the pistol. Yeah, nine yards deep. And they'll fake to him all alone. Nice pitch and catch for a first down to Tyson Taylor. You know what I think I'm surprised of is that I, I haven't heard of more guys committing to ETSU. I, I, I guess I would have just thought with GQ coming back, you know, George Quarles coming back and being right here and knowing this area and all, I guess I would have thought maybe I would hear more ETSU. Not to say that it won't happen. Yeah, well, at that level, remember, that's below Coastal. So at that level, it, it is. Th those, those, yeah. those commitments don't happen until a little bit later. First down and 10 at the 41. Boy, a nice fortuitous bounce for Bishop. And then he will just stroll up to the 48-yard line. Bishop with a gain of eight yards, we'll call it. Takes him up to 221 total yards on the night, which is 93% of Karn's offense. Second down and three, maybe four. Tarwater in trouble, throws this one out, and an incomplete pass. Eric Kane down on the sideline, a Humana sideline report. Eric, you've got an update for us? Yes, uh, Corns is on offense right now, obviously, but when they go back out on defense, middle linebacker Kareen Ellis, who is the a uh, young man that was down for a little bit and had to be helped over the sideline. Uh, he has been stretched out with trainers the last couple of minutes, getting a good look. He got up, grabbed his helmet, and is with his teammates now. So looks like a guy who wants to get back in and play. Okay. Third down and four. If it's fourth and four here, is it four down territory? Yes. Starwater hands off to Bishop, and Bishop will lean forward. I believe he got it. He got it based off the spot. By the, yep, there he moved the chains. You know, it's a, it's it's uncanny how how right you are, Austin. How often you're right. Don't be condescending, Packer. First down and ten at the forty-nine. Must score on every possession at this point if you're Carnes. If they score here, it's the final score of last game. Just in reverse. Firewater rolls right. Looks to throw back as all kinds of green turf, but now needs to get rid of it. Nice fake. And will reach out close to first down yardage, and I think he'll get it. Boy, the nice pump fake. Stop the defender. Stopped him in his tracks. 
He's going to load up, load up, load up. Then whoop. Faked us out. Very nice. Did the little Patrick Mahomes reaching the football out. Which was enough for the first down. First down and 10, 34 seconds to go in the third quarter. Bishop in the backfield going to be buried as the Wildcats got back. And Deshaun Knowles leading the way. That could be the last play of the third quarter. I probably would let it be if I were, if I were Carnes. Yeah, they look like they're in no hurry. Sixth tackle for loss for Oak Ridge, and that will take us to the end of the quarter. 42-28, Wildcats with the lead as we go to the fourth quarter on FCA's Rivalry Thursday, presented by Pilot Company. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you by Commercial Bank, Humana, E2 Sports, and OEB Law. Community banking is about location. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of families and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank, life made better. Hi, I'm State Farm Agent Scotty Dykes. While the insurance industry has changed over the years, our office offers auto, home, life, mortgages, and many other banking services, including retirement planning. So please give our office a call, text us, or email us, and we'll be Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Costa. Dr. Malone and I here at Knoxville Smiles are here to help you with any of your dental needs, whether it's a routine cleaning, a root canal, or if you just want some advice. Did you know that you don't have to settle for a denture anymore? My team and Dr. Malone are here to help you no matter where you're at and to help you figure out the truth for your dental health. So give us a call or visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Matlock Tire has a reputation for being a little bit old school. We're proud to be known for our outstanding hometown customer service. We've been doing things that way for over 60 years. But Matlock now offers new modern conveniences, such as family-friendly waiting areas, online appointment scheduling. You can even shop for tires and see our current stock right from your computer or smartphone. We invite you to stop into one of our five convenient locations or come see us online at matlocktireservice.com. Modern convenience, hometown service. Matlock Tire Service and Auto Repair. Hi, my name is Steve Shelton, Managing Principal with First Choice Lending Services. Right now, the housing market in Tennessee can be challenging, and you need the right lender to help you walk through it. We're a local lender. We're part of your community, and we know how to best serve you. When you get a home loan with First Choice Lending, you'll get a loan that is customized just for you. If you need help getting approved for a home loan, please give one of our experienced loan officers a call today. And the fourth quarter is brought to you by Hillary Frost Homes. Your opportunity to have lunch with the Vols, all you have to do is go and sign up on the website, HillaryFrostHomes.com. And we will announce the winner. You and three of your friends will have lunch with the Vols, courtesy of Spire Sports. We'll make that announcement December the 4th, HillaryFrostHomes.com. We go to the fourth quarter, 42-28 Oak Ridge, a second down and 15 for the Beavers. They'll go back to Bishop off left tackle, and he will get about four of it back. Take a look at the third quarter stats brought to you by Louis B. Long. We had more balance from the Wildcats and a 14 point lead. Found position, they caught up a little bit that quarter. How many passing yards for the Beavers? 32. Thank you. Third down and 10 at the 38. Tarwater double pass, throws this one back. Nobody is there. Gonna try to make something out of nothing. 
It'll be a loss of one yard as Walker Lockhart tried to throw that one. Nice job by the Oak Ridge secondary to stay at home. I mean, when you throw it back that far, even the secondary can see that they threw it backwards. Well, and he threw that thing on such a line. Had Lockhart drop that? Fourth down and 12, 12th play of the drive. This the biggest. Bishop split out to the left. Tarwater rolling left. He's going to run for it. Can he get there? Yes, he will. He'll get inside the 20, out of bounds at the 16. No flags. What a can, well, there was a ball that some kid threw over there on the hill. I thought it was a flag, but it wasn't. 26 yard gain for Tarwater. If Carnes were to come back, mark that one down at a fourth down and 12, Tarwater making the wise decision to run the football. Some kind of a stoppage. The official is telling Oak Ridge to stay on the field, yet Carnes has run over to their coaches. That was odd. The play clock has started. Yeah, play clock has started. You got 20 seconds to go on the sh on the uh, play clock. First down at the 14 yard line after a gain of 26. Play clock at 10. They'll turn hand off to Bishop right up the middle. He'll lean forward for three yards down to the 11. Joe McNish, what's the longest drive for Carnes tonight? Any way to? This one. This one here. Second 14 seven, plays. The drive that started on their own 17, almost intercepted, catches made inside the 10 to Taylor. And for just a second, I thought that ball was going to be picked. This was almost a phenomenal pick. It ends up being a nice couple of yard pickup. Wow, he just kind of <laughs> took it away. That'll bring up third down and three. Yeah, Brian Kelly almost had it. Third and four from the eight. Third down and four at the eight. Bishop right up the middle, going to be shut down at the seven yard line. So a fourth down and about two and a half. And obviously a spot where you're going for it down 14. Well, if I'm going for it, I'm going for it, giving it to number eight. You can get a first down inside the four. Big play here, two for two on fourth down. Fourth down and three. They'll turn, fake it to Bishop. Tarwater, can, he can't get it back. He tried to throw it back to Bishop, but the pressure from the Oak Ridge front, he couldn't get the shoulders square to get enough mustard on the ball to get it to number eight. Yeah, they tried the bootleg out the back to the tight end. It wasn't there. By the time he reversed to go back to Bishop, he was seeing a lot of gray barreling down on him. Well, for all your apparel needs, use the people that we use, E2 Sports. Find them online at myE2sports.com. They do their own embroidery, their own print work. You don't have to wait four to six weeks for it. They'll get it done quickly. 
Hundley off left tackle. Look out here. Hundley past the 30, past the 40, past the 50, and will be shoved out of bounds after a huge gain by Walker Lockhart. But Hundley goes 65 yards and flips the field that quickly. A combination, Dozier, Hundley. Hundley, Dozier. This time it was Hundley. Great job on the left side of that line, opened up a massive hole. He ran right through it, used the speed before Lockhart knocked him out. And if you're Carnes, you were hoping at least you could have, you know, held him down there and, and kept the field the way that it was. Oak Ridge completely has flipped the field as this one is pitched out to Dozier. And down near the 20 yard line. And Oak Ridge about to put this one away if they get in for six. Second down and two right at the 20. We'll call it the D1 red zone. Inside handoff, Hunley in a bit of trouble, but breaks the tackle down inside the 15. Oh, he's slippery. Actually, that was Dozier. Dozier goes out and Hunley now comes back in. You're right, it's like he's bathed in Crisco. We have an official timeout. Injury timeout as a beaver is down on the far side of the field. Is is back, and OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. 7.39 to go, 42-28 Oak Ridge over Carnes. Still got a guy down tonight. Here you go, Packer. 15 carries for Dozier, 122 yards, two touchdowns. He's also got two catches for 62 yards and a touchdown. Hundley, eight carries, 112 yards, three touchdowns. The combination of those two combining for all six touchdowns for the Wildcats to this point. Well, here's the deal. If we put both of them out there, we'll have one of them get a hat, and I'll mail the other one. Do we really have faith in you to do that? <laughs> I'll drive it back over. No, you won't. You wouldn't drive the GP. Okay, here we go. Here we go. First down and 10 at the 12 yard line. Inside handoff to Hundley off left tackle. In the end zone. Your stats are wrong. Another touchdown for Jai Hundley. And the Wildcats opening this one up. 12 yard run, which means he's got nine carries, 124 yards, and now four touchdowns. Nice. And again, those two guys have been dying. But it was a jump. All seven touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, how could you only give it, you know, the MVP to one of them? The other one gets left out. Yep. Still what I'm thinking. I mean, that would be wrong. Forty-eight twenty-eight. Took the over 76 and just hit. 49-28. Wildcats with the lead. 7.28 to go on rivalry Thursday.
Well, after Carnes went 16 plays and 76 yards in 731 and didn't get a touchdown, went toward on fourth down and didn't get it. Oak Ridge turns around and goes 93 yards in just four plays. Jai Hundley with yet another touchdown. His fourth of the night. And 49-28 is the score with 7.25 to go. Who needs the Commanders and the Bears who've scored three points and a half? We're at 77. The three nothing Chicago. The uh, Washington. Uh, congratulations to the second of our two Scholar Athletes of the Night, brought to you by E2 Sports, the official apparel provider for Rivalry Thursday. Blake Steed, a senior. 4.22 GPA. Congratulations to that young man doing it on the field and in the classroom as well. First down and 10. Tarwater looking to throw. Takes a deep shot. And Brendan Hayward says, thank you very much. I like playing center field. Hayward says, can I get some open space? And he'll step out at the 33-yard line. And now the Wildcats can start sitting on the football and running the clock. That pass was kind of just thrown deep. And Hands together prayer, hoping maybe somebody wearing white would go under and get it. Oak Ridge got a lot of confidence off tonight. We'll see if they can take that into next week's game against Dobbins Bennett. It'll be a big one. It could be another big confidence booster for the Wildcats before that season finale. Come on here or there? Uh, I want to say it's here. I know the, I think the Campbell County game is at Campbell County. Hunley off left tackle, cuts back inside, down inside the 15. We'll pop up the season schedule for Oak Ridge, and it will show us what they've got the rest of the way at three and four. As they'll go. So those senior yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dobbins Bennett, Campbell County. And then into the playoffs. And with a win tonight, it looks like the playoffs would be here first round. Yeah, if we keep that up in just a second, I mean, you look at the scores. 46 in the opener against South Bill, then only 10 against Bearden. 21 against Clinton. Zero against Farragut. 13 or 33 against Lenore City, and then 14 and 13 the last two weeks. So they've either scored a lot or not scored very much. Two pretty good teams they played the last couple of weeks. No, no, 100%. But I'm just saying, like, when you look on the whole, though, I mean, you know, they've, they've not been, you know, Farragut, they scored zero. I mean, very few times do you see a team get shut no, out. No, you're right? right, especially not in that, in that rivalry. Got a little cramping going on out there, which would give us the opportunity to strike up the band again and show the Karn schedule and where the Beavers are from here on out. They're off next week and then play Clinton. A Boy, game that, and it was a revenge game because Clinton beat Carnes last year at Clinton. This one over there at the Beaver Dam. And I'm going to tell you, you the gotta, Blue you're, Zoo, you're depending ready. on what era you played at Carnes. You really have to feel for Clinton in the sense if they lose to Powell and Oak Ridge, both by a touchdown and touchdown. They lose an overtime to Campbell County by six, 54-48. Losing to Lenore City by four. I mean, they haven't lost by double figures yet, and yet they got four regional losses out of that. That's just, I mean, man, it just, Clinton just so, so close, so close. And I wouldn't be surprised if they are right back there next year, and the, they're just so close to these teams. Oak Ridge is about to go past the half century mark. And off to Dozier. How about the pancake block? Dozier yeah. gets in the end zone. We'll give him four touchdowns. For another too. touchdown. 55 for the Wildcats. It would only be fair if Dozier and Hundley both had four. And Farragut's looking up and saying, we shut these guys out. And if you wanted to 
confidence builder. Uh, there, look at the pancake block over on the right side. Well, what you're going to see if, if, if we had the Carnes season schedule up again, you'd see a lot of points. They, the defense has given up a lot of points, so this is a recurring theme as far as giving up the points. Extra point is up. It is good. 56-28 is the new score as the one-two punch proving to be a lethal combination tonight. Watch the right side. Clunk. And Dozier just not to be denied. So our thanks uh, to uh, all of you again, Reese Across America as $1,140 tonight collected here uh, at Oak Ridge. Um, and so I I got to do the math on exactly where we're at this year. I mean, we've got to be at eleven dollars or $12,000 so far. We're about 10000 Okay, I'm being told we hit 10000 tonight. So uh, thank you to you. By the way, you can go to knoxreads.org. Uh, when you get on there, you'll see the Rivalry Thursday logo. Uh, just donate there. Uh, there are some surprises coming up, I'm being told. There's some fundraisers that are being done out there for, for our cause for Aries Across America. 18,000 gravestones in Knoxville, in Knox County, uh, for our veterans. And all of them had a wreath on them last year for Christmas. And I think we're on track to do it again this year. Love it. It's big time. And each community kind of buys in each week and steps up big time. Carnes will get the ball here to uh, kick off this drive. Looks like they will uh, a few changes out there. Bishop no longer in the game. They'll hand to a uh, young man who is a junior. Jeff Will also. Also, who could be the guy next year with Bishop moving on to Coastal Carolina. I think one of the questions you talk about Dobbins Bennett and, uh, you know, maybe Deshaun Bishop is done for the night. I think one of the questions is, you know, is, is Dobbins Bennett for real? I mean, their one loss was a one-point loss to Greenville where they went for two in the win, which to me, Dobbins Bennett has to be for real. So at what point in the playoffs, you know, are those teams around here that are battling it out in that region with Maryville and Bradley and Farragut and Bearden and the four-headed monster that is, you know, when does that happen? Pretty early. I mean, first round. Yeah, first round. One of those teams plays at Dobbins Bennett first round. Yeah, we've seen that before. BB losing to several teams sure. this way over the years in the first round. And a jailbreak here as the Wildcats are just kind of teeing off right now. Grayson Hope. Carnes will punt it away. Fourth and 19. Not the uh, second half that the Beavers had hoped for after they got the onside kick to start the second half and cut it to 28-20. Uh, High snap. And they'll punt it away. And the Wildcats will get it. And the Wildcats. Oh, Packer, if you, it, 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 Mark well, Packer's go. got a deer feeder out back of his house. Here we and go. And they come in there and they eat and eat. He has these bucks, these huge bucks come in there. Yeah, I had a 10-point buck there just was, now live. The ring camera is set and, up and it 
it shows me on my phone that you know there's movement at my deer feeder. So I, uh, I Austin looks at me and goes, the, I'm gonna push the, the green button. Push the green button and it's like, get out of here. <laughs> they took off like a <laughs> shot out of a cannon. It's just small things in life. Uh, you got the DHIL photos of the night, and uh, boy, Dustin got some good shots tonight. You can go online at uh, dhil.photo. We'll do that after uh, the play here. Looks like a backup quarterback has come in. And they'll hand off off right tackle. Nice defensive play. Had some great shots tonight. DHIL dot photos coming down the 72 steps to glory, which has been glory tonight. A lot of shots, I'm sure. Just Sean Bishop, Brandon Hayward, Tarwater. Great shots tonight and uh, shots of the band, and cheerleaders, and dance team, and all of that online at dhil.photo. Incomplete pass here. You are now, you have gone from what was a really good game. You're two points away from a nonstop clock. Yeah. Somebody go there and tell Scott, quit throwing the ball. <laughs> Incompletions are, are not our friend at this point. Nice to see the band still playing. Hope all those kids will be a part of the uh, rivalry showcase band on December the 10th at Anderson County on CW. Third down and 12 for the Wildcats. Inside handoff, and Hundley will pick up six yards. Is that Hundley? Yes, it's Hundley. Yeah, of course, the uh, no one's running the clock. Now we finally, there we go. Fourth down and five, and the Wildcats, instead of punting, will go for it with the backup out there, Blaine Stansberry, who is a freshman at quarterback. Sansbury looking to throw, gets some pressure, and slung down back at the 36-yard line. What are your thoughts about Heritage Sevier County tomorrow night? We're going to pick that game here in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and. What an opportunity for the Mountaineers. You can just go ahead and pick no, it now. No, don't pick it. You can analyze it, pick it later. You're going to give well, it. It's very interesting. It is a big game for Heritage. Um, very interesting from the standpoint of Sevier County for years scored, 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 and couldn't stop anybody. Right. All of a sudden now they can't score, but they stop everybody. So they're winning like <laughs> 7 nothing over Halls, 7-6 over Jeff County, right. like these low-scoring right. affairs. Yeah. The one thing Heritage can do is score the football. And so they've been able to score just about anybody. And so we'll be interested to kind of see that matchup tomorrow night. Joe Osamet goes up against the, what is a very good Sevier County defense. Backup quarterback in. Heritage at three and four. Sevier County at six and one. I think for Josh Jones and Beard, and if they were to go to Cleveland and get a win, that would be a uh, as big a win as any for them to this point. They're five and two. That would put them at six and two. Got a few scores from tonight uh, to share with you. Granger beats Seymour 28 to 7. Uh, this from the Sean Gang Sports Network. Greenville beats Sullivan East 51 to nothing. Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge over Austin East 30 to 14. Sweetwater over Brainerd 32 to 14. And in the fourth quarter, White's Creek leads Trousdale County 16-14. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so juvenile. We have a huge, huge following 
in White's Creek, okay? <laughs> Do we really? Yeah. Who? Nope, there's possibly somebody watching. Huron Freeman, number 27 at running back for Carnes. Be interesting to see what Oak Ridge does with this win. It's, you know, there, there's always that team that gets hot at the right time. Um, I mean, this is just one game. I understand that. Um, but, you know, you got Dobbins Bennett coming in, the Campbell County. Yep. they got a couple tough ones. Well, what do they do? It, it, here, offensively, they've not they, – they've struggled with points this year. Dobbins Bennett's a big test next week. And then they play a Campbell County team, much like Carnes, that's given up a lot of points on defense. Clock under a minute to go. And the Wildcats uh, going to improve to four and four, three and one in region play. Possibly the last play, unless this one falls to the turf. And we will have another play. I will give my uh, sister a big shout out tonight. She's one of the co-head coaches of Morristown West Volleyball, and they overachieved this year, made it all the way to sub-state. Their season came to an end tonight against Maryville. Congratulations oh, to the Lady yeah, Rebels moving on to the state volleyball tournament, and congratulations to Lacey and Morristown West on a really good year. Uh, again, overachieving to what many people thought they would by making a sub-state run. Are you also going to throw in how well your daughters did tonight at their golf tournament? No, they're done for the year. Oh, oh. It's Tammy Lauren and the Fall Golf League ended last week. Do the girls have a sponsor? Hayden Hill subdivision or anything? No. 25 seconds to go. And that should be the last play of the game. Boy, well, Scott Cummings and his program needed a win like this one. <laughs> Final score tonight, Oak Ridge gets the win over Carnes, 56 to 28. For Brad Taylor, a disappointing night, which will send the Beavers on the road in the playoffs. And for the Wildcats, hope that they will be home for the playoffs.